New South Wales Government, Transport for New South Wales, Road User Handbook. The Road User Handbook covers the main road rules and requirements for driving on New South Wales roads. The handbook also aims to help you get your licence, become a safe driver and register your vehicle. It has been written in plain, easy to understand language and should not be taken as a precise interpretation of the law. See the current and complete set of road rules at legislation.nsw.gov.au. The handbook is reviewed and updated periodically. Check roads maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au for all the latest information. In this handbook, the words must or must not are used for rules that you have to follow. The words should or should not are used when explaining safe and low risk driving. The road user handbook is also published in community languages. A free interpreter service is available if you need to take the driver knowledge test or hazard perception test in another language. Call 13213213 to arrange an interpreter. The statistics in this handbook are sourced from Transport for NSW 2014-2018 to unless stated otherwise. Introduction the Road User Handbook covers the main rules you need to know to drive legally and safely on New South Wales roads. It's essential reading for anyone learning to drive. It aims to prepare you for the challenges of driving and reduce your risk on the road. This handbook is the main resource to get your car driver license under the New South Wales Graduated Licensing Scheme. It covers the questions in the Driver Knowledge Test which you have to pass to get your learner license. Read this handbook to prepare for the DKT as well as other tests in the graduated licensing scheme. This handbook can also be used by other drivers and road users to check the rules, understand their legal responsibilities and learn safe driving behaviour. There are also similar handbooks for bicycle riders, motorcycle riders and heavy vehicle drivers at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Remember, we all have a responsibility to share our roads, use them safely and look out for each other. Licenses. Getting your driver license is a journey. In New South Wales, it starts with getting your learner license. Your learning is spread over three or four years to help build experience to become a safe and skilled driver. A driver license gives you the freedom, but it also brings responsibility. It's a commitment between you and the New South Wales community to keep the roads safe for everyone. There's a set process and set fees for getting your driver license. You must go through the process honestly and not bribe anyone or cheat along the way. When you get your licence, do not abuse or misuse it. If you do, you risk heavy penalties. You may lose your licence and your freedom to drive. Getting your driver licence. To get a full unrestricted car driver licence, you need to go through three licence stages. Learn a licence, Provisional P1 licence and Provisional P2 licence. Along the way, you need to pass three tests. Driver Knowledge Test, Hazard Perception Test and Driving Test. There's a fee for each licence and test. See fees at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au This is called the Graduated Licensing Scheme and it aims to help you become a safe and low risk driver. It takes at least four years to get a full license if you're aged under 25, or at least three years if you're over 25. Before you start, 
you must be age 16 or over, have a residential address in New South Wales, be able to prove who you are and be medically fit to drive and able to pass an eyesight test. Step one, driver knowledge test. The first step is to take the DKT. This test is often called the learner's test because you need to pass it to get your learner license. The DKT is a computer-based test about road rules and road safety. You have to answer 45 questions selected at random from 600 questions. To pass, you need to correctly answer 12 out of 15 general knowledge questions and 29 out of 30 road safety questions, including traffic signs. Preparing for the DKT. Everything you need to know to pass the DKT is in this handbook. Study it to give yourself the best chance to pass the test. You can also take the online practice driving tests at road-maritime.transport nsw.gov.au Download the Practice Driver Knowledge Test app from the App Store or Google Play. Read the DKT questions at road-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au or get help from the Driver Licensing Access Program if you're Aboriginal or a disadvantaged person. You must pass the DKT honestly. If you cheat, you cannot resit the test for six weeks and must pay the fee again. Booking the DKT. Book and pay for your test at service.nsw.gov.au. When you book, you can choose which service centre you want to take the test at. If you pass the DKT, you will get a temporary learner licence on the day you take the test. Your actual learner licence will be posted to you. You can also apply for a digital driver license at service.nsw.gov.au. A digital license is optional and doesn't replace the plastic card. If you fail the DKT, depending on availability, you can resit the test on the same day or book it to do another time. You have to pay for the test each time you resit it. Step 2. Learner Licence Once you've passed the DKT and have your learner licence, you can start practising driving with a supervisor who has a full Australian driver licence. If you're over 25, you can go to Step 3 as soon as you feel ready. You do not need to log any driving hours. If you're under 25, you need to start logging hours. Your learner licence is valid for five years so you can practice for as long as you need. If you need to, you can renew it for another five years by taking the DKT test and paying the test and license fees again. Logging driving hours. You need to log at least 120 hours of driving, including 20 hours at night, before you can take the driving test. See Learner Driver Logbook at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au To help you gain experience and log your hours, you can do the Safer Drivers course. This will help you develop hazard perception and safe driving skills. You get 20 hours logbook credit once you complete the course. Learn Drive Survive is an accredited provider for the Transport for New South Wales Safer Drivers course. You can have structured three for one driving lessons with a licensed driving instructor. For every one hour lesson, the driving instructor will record three hours driving experience in your logbook. And you can get support from the Driver Licensing Access Program if you're Aboriginal or a disadvantaged person. Learner license restrictions. There are license restrictions that you need to follow. Examples include always having someone with a full Australian driver license supervising you when you're learning to drive, zero alcohol, 
and displaying your L plates front and back. These restrictions are there to keep you safe as you develop your driving skills. Step three, hazard perception test. The HPT is a computer-based test that measures your ability to recognise and respond to road hazards. The test uses film clips of real driving situations. You respond by touching the screen to show what you would do, for example, slow down or turn. If you're over 25, you can do the test as soon as you have your learner licence and you feel ready. If you're under 25, you need to have your learner licence for at least 10 months before you can take the test. Preparing for the HPT. Make sure you're prepared before taking the test. These resources will help you prepare. Hazard perception test details at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au or Hazard Perception Handbook at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Booking the HPT Book and pay for your test at service.nsw.gov.au When you book, you can choose which service centre you want to take the test at. If you pass the HPT The next step is to prepare for the driving test for a provisional P1 licence. If you fail the HPT, depending on availability, you can resit the test on the same day or book to do it another time. You have to pay for the test each time you resit the test. Step 4. Driving test. You need to pass the driving test to get your provisional P1 licence. If you do not pass the driving test within 15 months of passing the HPT, you must pass the HPT again before you can take the driving test. The driving test is a practical, on-road test that you take with a Service New South Wales testing officer. The test assesses your driving skills, decision making and how you share the road with others. You have to bring a suitable car to do the test. It needs to be registered, safe for road use and ready to drive. If you're over 25, you can book your driving test as soon as you've passed the HPT. If you're under 25, you also need to have had your learner licence for at least 12 months and logged at least 120 hours of supervised driving, including 20 hours of night driving. Preparing for the driving test. Make sure you feel prepared and confident that you can pass before taking the test. Use the guide to the driving test at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au to help you prepare. Booking the driving test. Book and pay for your test at service.nsw.gov.au. When you book, you can choose which service centre you want to take the test at. If you pass the driving test, you can apply for your provisional P1 licence. If you fail the driving test, if you fail the driving test, you can take it again after seven days. You need to pay for the test once again. Step five, provisional P1 licence. Once you've passed the driving test, you can apply for your provisional P1 licence. Once you have your P1 licence, you no longer have to keep a logbook or have a supervisor in the car with you. As you drive on your own, you continue to learn, build your driving skills and gain confidence. P1 licence restrictions. There are licence restrictions that you need to follow. Examples include the maximum speed you can drive, the vehicles you can drive and the number of passengers you can take. These restrictions are here to help keep you safe as you develop your driving skills. How long a P1 licence is valid? As long as you follow the restrictions of your P1 licence, it's valid for 18 months. You can renew it for a fee for another 18 months if you want to. When you can progress to a P2 licence? If you're ready, you can apply for a P2 licence after 12 months. If your P1 licence is suspended, the 12 months is extended by the length of the suspension, for example, by three months. 
If your P1 licence is disqualified, you will need to reapply for a P1 licence when your disqualification ends. This will restart the P1 licence period and you can apply for a P2 licence after 12 months. Step 6. Provisional P2 licence. Once you've had your provisional P1 licence for at least 12 months, you can apply for a provisional P2 licence at service.nsw.gov.au. P2 licence restrictions. There are still licence restrictions that you need to follow. Some are the same as P1 licence, but others are different, such as how many passengers you can take and what you can tow. How long is a P2 licence valid? As long as you follow the restrictions of your P2 licence, it's valid for 36 months. You can renew it for a fee for another 36 months if you want to. When you can progress to a full licence. If you're ready, you can progress to a full licence after 24 months. If your P2 licence is suspended, the 24 months is extended by the length of the suspension, for example, 3 months, plus an additional 6 months. This is to give you time to refine your safe driving skills and make sure you're ready for a full licence. If your P2 licence is disqualified, you will need to reapply for a P2 licence when your disqualification ends. This will restart the P2 licence period and you can progress to a full licence after 24 months. Step 7. Full unrestricted licence. Once you've had your provisional P2 licence for at least 24 months, you can apply for your full driver licence at service.nsw.gov.au. You can apply for a full licence for 1, 3 or 5 years or 10 years if you're aged between 21 and 44. Your driver licence gives you a great sense of freedom, but it comes with responsibility. Driving is one of the riskiest things we do on a daily basis. Make sure you keep up your driving skills and follow the road rules. Licence classes. This handbook is about getting a car C-class licence. The vehicles you can drive with a C-Class licence are below. If you have a provisional P1 or P2 licence, there are restrictions on the vehicles you can drive. See licence restrictions on page 19. Other vehicles such as motorcycles and heavy vehicles need different licences. You must have your C-Class licence before getting these licences, except for Rider R-Class licence. You also have to take tests, competency assessments and medical checks. Drivers with a C-Class licence can drive vehicles up to 4.5 tonne gross vehicle mass and those that seat up to 12 adults including the driver. This includes utes, vans and some light trucks, tractors and implements such as road graders, car-based motor tricycles, three-wheeled vehicles made from car components, Drivers with a C-Class licence must not carry passengers aged under 16 in a car-based motor tricycle. Rider R licence. Riders with an R-Class licence can ride any motorcycle, scooter or motor tricycle. See the Motorcycle Riders Handbook at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au. Light Rigid LR Class Licence Drivers with an LR Class Licence can drive C vehicles as well as vehicles over 4.5 tonne, but not more than 8 tonne. For example, small delivery trucks, those that seat more than 12 adults, including the driver, and are not more than 8 tonne, for example, minibuses, and with towing a trailer up to 9 tonne. Medium Rigid or MR Class Licence Drivers with a Medium Rigid Licence can drive C-Class and LR vehicles as well as rigid vehicles with two axles and over 8 tonne, for example buses, or a towing trailer up to 9 tonne. Heavy Rigid HR Class Licence Drivers with a HR Licence can drive C-Class, LR, and MR vehicles, as well as rigid vehicles and articulated buses, 
with three or more axles and over eight ton or a towing trailer up to nine tons. Heavy combination licenses. Drivers with a HC license can drive C-Class, LR, MR and HR vehicles, as well as prime movers attached to single semi-trailers plus any unladen converter dolly and rigid vehicles towing a trailer over 9 tonne plus any unladen converter dolly. Multi-combination MC class licence. Drivers with an MC class licence can drive C, LR, MR, HR and HC vehicles, as well as B-double or road trains, low loader dollies, low loader trailer combinations. For information about LR, MR, HR, HC and MC licences, see Heavy Vehicle Driver Handbook at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au. Other licences. Once you have your full C-Class licence, you can apply for a passenger transport licence code taxis, chauffeur-driven hire cars and rideshare vehicles. See point-to-point -point transport drivers at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au. Driving instructor licence. See driving instructors at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au and tow truck driver certificate. See tow trucks at fair trading nsw.gov.au Once you have a license for the class of bus you want to drive, you can apply for a bus driver authority. See applying for a new bus driver authority at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au License restrictions. There are restrictions you must follow when you drive with a learner license provisional P1 licence and provisional P2 licence. These restrictions are in place to help keep you safe as you develop your driving skills. They also apply when you drive in another state or territory. If you do not follow these restrictions, you'll get a fine. You can also get demerit points or even lose your licence. An alcohol limit. Your blood alcohol concentration must be zero when you're on your learner license, P1 license and P2 license. This means you must not have any alcohol in your system when you drive. Maximum speed limit. You can drive to a maximum of 90 kilometers per hour when you are on your learner license and P1 license. You must observe all speed limits below 90 kilometers per hour. You can drive to a maximum of 100 kilometres per hour when you are on your provisional P2 licence. You must observe all speed limits below 100 kilometres per hour. Mobile phone usage for learner licence, provisional P1 and provisional P2. You must not use a mobile phone while driving, even when you are stationary. For example, stopped at lights or stuck in traffic. This includes texting, phone calls, music, emailing, social media, using the internet, maps and photography. The only time you can use your phone is to show your digital driver license when instructed by police and use wallet functions to make a transaction or show a voucher, but only in areas such as a car park, driveway or drive through and if the vehicle is stationary. Number of passengers for a learner license, provisional P1 and provisional P2. You can carry only the number of passengers that you have seat belts and approved and suitable child car seats for. If you return to driving after being disqualified, you can only carry one passenger at a time for 12 months. This is for provisional P1s, and provisional P2s. If you are aged under 25, between 11pm and 5am, 
Only one of your passengers can be aged under 21. Exemptions may apply. This is applicable for provisional P1 license holders. High performance cars. This applies to provisional P1 and P2 license holders. You must not drive high performance cars such as those with a power to mass ratio greater than 130 kilowatts per ton and those with significant modifications made to the vehicle's engine and those that are listed as banned high performance vehicles. See the full list of banned high performance vehicles at roads-maritime.transport.com nsw.gov.au There's no restriction on learning to drive in a high performance vehicle. Displaying L or P plates. You must clearly display plates on the front and back or roof of the exterior of the vehicle you're driving. Learners must display L plates. P1 drivers must display red P plates and P2 drivers must display a green P plate. The whole letter, the L or the P, must be visible. Location restrictions. You must not drive in Parramatta Park, Centennial Park or Moore Park when in Sydney if you are on a learner licence. If you are on a provisional P1 or P2 licence, there's no location restriction. Being supervised. This applies to learner license holders. You must be supervised by a person with an appropriate full unrestricted Australian driver license, not a learner, provisional or overseas license. They must sit next to you. Provisional P1 license holders. You do not need to be supervised. The exception is if you passed your driving test in an automatic car and want to drive a manual car. Provisional P2 license holders. You do not need to be supervised. Supervising a learner. Learner license holders, P1 provisionals and P2 provisionals must not supervise or instruct a learner driver. Learner license holders must not tow a trailer or any other vehicle. Provisional P1 license holders can tow light trailers that weigh up to 250 kilograms when empty. A red P plate must be on the back of the trailer. Provisional P2 license holders. Full license towing rules apply. A green P plate must be on the back of the trailer. Manual or automatic vehicles. You can learn to drive in either an automatic or a manual car when on your learner license. If you passed your driving test in a manual car, you can drive either a manual or an automatic vehicle. If you passed your driving test in an automatic car, you can only drive an automatic car unless supervised in a manual car by someone with a full Australian driver's license. This applies to provisional P1 license holders. There's no restriction. You can drive either an automatic or manual vehicle for provisional P2 license holders. Trucks and heavy vehicles. This applies to learner licenses and provisional P1 license holders. You must not drive or learn to drive vehicles that need another class of license such as trucks and other heavy vehicles. You can learn to drive the following vehicles that need a different class of license when you hold a provisional P2 license. Light rigid or medium rigid vehicles as soon as you have your P2 license. Heavy rigid vehicles after one year. Motor tricycles. This applies to learner license holders provisional P1 and provisional P2 license holders. You must not drive car-based motor tricycles. Medical conditions and disability. When you apply for your driver license, you must state whether you have a medical condition or disability that could affect your driving. You also need to pass an eyesight test. 
Medical conditions. For some medical conditions, such as epilepsy or cardiovascular conditions, you'll need regular medical assessments to make sure you're fit to drive. If you develop a medical condition once you've got your license, you must tell Transport for New South Wales. This is because driving with a medical condition can put yourself and other road users at risk. Failure to follow medical direction can lead to you losing your license. See fitness to drive at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au People with disability. Disability can have either a minor or serious effect on your driving ability. If Transport for New South Wales determines that a disability has a serious effect, you'll need to take a test. This is to show your driving ability and see if you need any aids or vehicle modifications. You may have conditions placed on your driver license, for example, only driving automatic vehicles. See Driving with a Disability at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au As you get older As you get older, changes to your health may affect your ability to drive. From the age of 75, you'll need to pass a medical assessment and eyesight test every year to keep your driver licence. From 85, you'll also need to take a practical driving assessment every two years. Alternatively, if you no longer require an unrestricted licence, you can opt for a modified, that is local area licence, without the need for a practical driving assessment. See older drivers at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Interstate and Overseas Licences If you have a current interstate or overseas driver's licence, you can use it to drive in New South Wales. The conditions and how long you can use it for depend on your circumstances. If you have a provisional licence, you also need to follow the conditions of your current interstate or overseas licence. If you have a learner licence, you also need to follow the conditions of your current interstate or overseas licence and the New South Wales Learner Licence Restrictions on page 19. Interstate and New Zealand Licences You can drive in New South Wales using your interstate or New Zealand driver licence for up to three months, as long as your licence is not suspended or disqualified, your licence is the correct licence class for the vehicle you're driving, you follow New South Wales road rules, and your right to drive in New South Wales has not been withdrawn. To continue to drive in New South Wales after three months, you must transfer your licence to a New South Wales licence. You must do this within the three months. Overseas licences except New Zealand. You can drive in New South Wales using your overseas driver licence as long as your licence is current and not suspended or disqualified, your right to drive in New South Wales has not been withdrawn. Your licence is the correct licence class for the vehicle you're driving. You were not issued an Australian Permanent Resident Visa more than three months ago. And you follow New South Wales road rules. If your licence is not in English, you must carry an international driver permit or a translation of your licence when driving. You're encouraged to transfer to a New South Wales licence if you intend to live in New South Wales for a long period of time. If you get an Australian Permanent Resident Visa, you must transfer to a New South Wales licence within three months. Transferring your licence When you transfer your interstate or overseas licence, you transfer to an equivalent New South Wales licence. Depending where your overseas licence is from, you may need to take the driver knowledge test and the driving test. See moving to New South Wales at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au To transfer your interstate or New Zealand licence. For full licence, 
provisional licence or learner licence, please visit service.nsw.gov.au. To transfer your overseas licence, please visit service.nsw.gov.au. Once you have a New South Wales licence, your interstate or overseas licence is invalid. This is because in Australia, you can only have one driver licence. Driving without a licence. You must always carry your licence when driving. Police can ask to see your licence anytime. If you're using a digital driver licence, make sure your phone is charged and that the screen is not cracked. You can get a fine for driving without your licence with you or refusing to show it when asked. Your licence must be current, not expired, suspended or disqualified. The correct licence class for the type of vehicle you're driving. A New South Wales licence, unless you're complying with the current requirements and conditions for interstate and overseas driver's licence. See Interstate and Overseas Licence on page 25. Penalties for driving without the correct current licence include large fines and prison. An increase for repeat offences within five years. You must not let anyone without a licence drive your vehicle. Learn a driver supervisor. You must always drive with a supervisor sitting in the seat next to you. Your learner licence can be immediately suspended if you drive without a supervisor. Supervisor requirements. Licence. A supervisor must have a full unrestricted Australian driver licence. This means a driver with a learner, provisional P1 or P2 or overseas licence must not supervise a learner driver. See licence restrictions on page 19. Both the supervisor and the learner driver can be fined if the supervisor does not have a full Australian driver licence. Alcohol and drugs. When supervising a learner driver, a supervisor must have a blood alcohol concentration under 0.05 and not have any illegal drugs present in the system or be under the influence of any drug. Police can breath test a supervisor involved in a crash. If a supervisor is admitted to hospital after a crash, medical practitioners can also take blood and urine tests. See alcohol limits on page 39. Police can also test a supervisor who shows signs of being under the influence of drugs, including prescription drugs. See Drugs and Medicines on page 43. The same severe penalties for alcohol and drugs that apply to drivers also apply to supervisors. Safety first. When you're learning to drive, your supervisor is both a role model and a mentor. They should support and help you become a safe and skilled driver. When you start learning, you should practice simple skills such as steering, accelerating and braking. It's best to learn these on a quiet road during the day. Once you've mastered those, you can move on to more difficult tasks on busier roads and in more challenging conditions. When you start practicing at night, drive on roads that you know well. See Supervising a Learner Driver at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Safe driving behaviour. Every year, around 350 people are killed on New South Wales roads. Another 22,000 are injured. The major behavioural factors that contribute to deaths on roads are speeding, drink driving, drug driving, fatigue and not wearing seatbelts. The graph below shows the major behavioural factors for young drivers and riders aged 17 to 25 involved in fatal crashes. 43% involve speeding. 22% involve the presence of illegal drugs. 17% involved alcohol. 15% involved fatigue. Learner P1 and P2 drivers in casualty crashes. New South Wales crash data shows that provisional P1 drivers are most likely to be involved in a crash. This graph shows the number of learner and provisional drivers involved in crashes that have casualties and their months of driving experience. To make sure our roads are safe for all road users, 
It's critical drivers understand and practice safe driving behaviours and follow the road rules. You can reduce your chances of being in a crash if you follow the speed limits and drive to the conditions, do not drink or take drugs and drive, get enough sleep and be aware when you're too tired to drive, make sure everyone in your vehicle is wearing a seatbelt. Your decisions can make a big difference to safety on the road. Speed limits. Speeding is the number one killer on New South Wales roads. On average, it's a factor in around 40% of deaths and 20% of serious injuries each year. The rules. Speed limits. On roads where there is a speed limit sign, you must not drive faster than that speed limit. On roads where there is no speed limit sign, you must not drive faster than the default speed limit. 50 kilometres per hour in built up areas, areas with street lights and buildings next to the road less than 100 metres apart, and 100 kilometres per hour for all other roads. Licence restrictions You must not drive faster than the maximum speed allowed by your driver licence, even when a speed limit sign is higher. For a learner licence holder, the maximum speed is 90 km per hour. For a provisional P1 licence holder, the maximum speed is 90 km per hour. For a provisional P2 licence holder, the maximum speed is 100 km per hour. Heavy vehicles over 4.5 tonne, this includes LR, MR, HR, HC, MC licence classes, the maximum speed is 100 km per hour. Radar detectors and jammers. It's illegal to have a radar detector or jammer in your vehicle. A radar detector or jammer is anything that detects, interferes with, or reduces the effectiveness of speed measuring devices. Penalties. Penalties for speeding include fines, demerit points including double demerit points, loss of license, and taking away your vehicle or number plates. The penalty increases the more you're over the speed limit and if you speed in school zones. Learner and provisional P1 drivers will go over their demerit point limit for any speeding offence and their licence will be suspended. See speeding penalties at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Speed limit signs Speed limit signs show you the maximum speed you can drive in good conditions. Slow down in poor conditions. Regulatory speed signs. Regulatory speed signs have a white background with the speed limit in a red circle. You must not drive faster than the speed limit shown on the sign. For example, you must not drive faster than 50 kilometers per hour. Variable speed limit signs. These are on electronic signs placed in tunnels and on motorways and bridges where the speed limit changes based on the road conditions. You must not go faster than the speed limit shown on the sign. Local traffic areas. A local traffic area is an area of local streets with a speed limit of 40 km per hour. The lower speed limit means greater safety for all road users and more peace and quiet for people living in the area. High pedestrian activity areas. High pedestrian activity areas have a speed limit of 30 km per hour or 40 km per hour. This lower speed limit improves safety in areas with high levels of pedestrian activity, such as busy central business district zones and small suburban shopping strips. Shared zone. A shared zone is where pedestrians, bicycles and other vehicles can share the road safely. Shared zones have a speed limit of 10 km per hour. You must not drive faster than this speed limit. You must also give way to any pedestrian in a shared zone. This includes slowing down and stopping, if necessary, to avoid them. School zone. A school zone is the area around a school between a school zone sign and an end school zone sign. You must not drive faster than the speed limit in a school zone on school days during the time shown on the sign. 
School days are published by the New South Wales Department of Education. Every school has at least one set of flashing lights, which operate during school zone times. Dragon's teeth are also painted on the road to make school zones more visible. School bus stop zone. A school bus stop zone is the area between a school bus stop zone sign and an end school bus stop zone sign. This area is where school buses stop to drop off or pick up children. If you're driving in a school bus stop zone and see a bus with flashing lights on the top, you must not pass or overtake it in any direction at more than 40 kilometres an hour while the lights are flashing. Buses with flashing lights. At any time when you are travelling in the same direction as a bus with a 40 when lights flash sign on the back and the lights on top are flashing, you must not overtake it at more than 40 kilometres per hour. This is because the bus is picking up or dropping off children who may be crossing or about to cross the road. Road work speed limit signs. Road work signs alert you to the start and the end of road works and the speed limit for that area. You must not go faster than the speed limit shown on the sign. Areas without speed signs. Default speed limits apply on roads without speed limit signs or roads with an end speed limit sign. Advisory speed signs. Advisory speed signs are not regulatory signs. They show the recommended maximum speed to safely drive when there are hazards such as curves, bends and crests. The advisory speed is for average vehicles in good driving conditions. You should drive at a slower speed if the conditions are poor. Advisory speed signs have a yellow background. An advisory speed sign is usually used with a warning sign. Safety first. There's no such thing as safe speeding. Speeding means driving over the speed limit or at a speed unsafe for the road conditions. Some people consider that going over the speed limit by 5 to 10 kilometres is acceptable speeding. This is a dangerous way to think. Research has shown that even a small increase in speed can lead to a big increase in your chance of a crash. Even if your passengers encourage you to, do not go over the speed limit. Speeding increases the risk of death or injury. A small difference in speed can make a large difference to the risk of death or serious injury. If a car collides with a pedestrian at 50 km per hour, the impact is twice as likely to kill the pedestrian than if the car had been travelling at 40 km per hour. Speed cameras reduce the risk and severity of crashes. Speed cameras are proven to change driver behaviour and reduce road trauma. There are four types of speed cameras in New South Wales. Mobile speed cameras, which are moved around the road network and can detect speeding anywhere and any time. Red light speed cameras, which capture both red light running and speeding at high risk intersections. Fixed speed cameras, which are in high risk locations such as tunnels or areas with a history of severe crashes. And average speed cameras, which measure the average speed of a heavy vehicle over long distances. Play your part in keeping our community safe. Slow down to save lives. See a list of speed camera locations at roadsafety.transport.nsw.gov.au Drive to road conditions. Even if you're driving at or below the speed limit, you may be driving too fast for road conditions, such as curves, rain, heavy traffic or night time. See driving in poor conditions on page 180. Alcohol limits. Alcohol affects your driving. It puts your safety and the safety of your passengers and other road users at risk. Drink driving is one of the major causes of death on New South Wales roads. The rules. Blood alcohol concentration. Your blood alcohol concentration must be under the legal limit when driving. The legal limit depends on your driver license or vehicle type. For learners, provisional P1 and provisional P2 license holders, the blood alcohol concentration is zero. 
for a full unrestricted license, C-Class or rider, fully licensed driver from interstate or overseas, the blood alcohol concentration is under 0.05. For public passenger vehicles, for example buses, coaches, taxis, rideshare vehicles and chauffeur-driven hire cars, heavy vehicles with a gross vehicle mass over 13.9 tonne, vehicle and trailer combinations with a gross combined mass over 13.9 tonnes, and dangerous good vehicles, the blood alcohol concentration is under 0.02. It is impossible for you to estimate your own blood alcohol concentration, even if you think you know how many drinks you've had. Your size and weight, how tired you are, and variation in alcohol servings can all affect your blood alcohol concentration. The only way to be sure you're under the limit is to not drink alcohol at all. Driving under the influence of alcohol. You must not drive under the influence of alcohol. If you think you might be under the influence, do not drive. Drinking alcohol while driving. You must not drink alcohol while in your vehicle and driving, even if your blood alcohol concentration stays below your legal limit. Random breath tests. You must not refuse a random breath test by the police. Police can stop you anytime and test your blood alcohol concentration by asking you to speak or blow into a breath testing device. Police can also breath test any driver involved in a crash. Blood and urine tests. You must not refuse a blood or urine test if asked to take one after a crash. If you're involved in a crash that's fatal, or likely to be fatal, police can arrest you to take blood and urine tests. If you're admitted to hospital after a crash, medical practitioners can take blood and urine tests for the police. Penalties. There are severe penalties for driving over the legal alcohol limit or under the influence of alcohol or refusing a blood or breath test. Penalties can be fines, loss of license, prison or an alcohol interlock on your vehicle. The penalty depends on how much you're over the limit and whether it's a first or repeat offence. If you drink alcohol while driving, you can get a fine and demerit points. See the penalties for drink driving at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au. Safety first. Alcohol affects your ability to drive. Even if you feel unaffected, as few as one or two drinks will affect your reaction, judgment and ability to drive. Alcohol is a depressant. It reduces your ability to drive safely because it slows your brain functions, you cannot respond to situations, make decisions or react quickly. Because it reduces your ability to judge speed, yours and others, and your distance from other cars, people or objects. Because it gives you false confidence. You may take greater risks because you think your driving is better than it really is. Because it makes it harder to do more than one thing at a time. While you concentrate on steering, you could miss things like traffic lights, cars and pedestrians. And because it makes you drowsy, you could fall asleep at the wheel. Alcohol increases crash risk. The more alcohol you have in your blood, the higher the risk of being in a crash. On Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights, around 50% of fatal crashes involve alcohol. Crashes involving drink driving are generally more serious. It's safest not to drink any alcohol. The simplest way to drive safely is to not drink at all if you intend to drive. After a heavy night of drinking, you may still be over your legal alcohol limit for much of the next day. It can take more than 18 hours for your blood alcohol concentration to get back to zero. There's no way you can speed up the rate at which your body gets rid of alcohol. Black coffee, a shower or a large meal will not work. The only thing that reduces your blood alcohol concentration is time. If you're planning to drink, make sure you organise a way to get home without driving. Drugs and medicine. Any drugs, including illegal drugs, prescription and over-the-counter medicines, can affect your driving and put the safety of passengers or other road users at risk. They can also change your behaviour, 
causing you to take risks you usually would not consider. If you think you might have illegal drugs in your system or be under the influence of any other drug or medicine, do not drive. The rules. Presence of illegal drugs. You must not drive with the presence of illegal drugs in your system. Drugs can remain in your system for a long time after you've taken them. Police can test any driver or supervisor in New South Wales for four common illegal drugs through mobile drug testing. Ecstasy, cannabis, cocaine and methamphetamine, including speed and ice. If you think you might have illegal drugs in your system, do not drive. Driving under the influence of drugs or medicine. You must not drive while under the influence of any drug, including illegal drugs, prescription medicines and over-the-counter medicines. If you think you might be under the influence of a drug or medicine, do not drive. Drug testing. You must not refuse drug testing by the police. There are two ways to test for drug driving. One, saliva, oral fluid test. Police can randomly stop and test the saliva of any driver for the presence of illegal drugs. You'll need to wipe a test stick down your tongue to check if you have illegal drugs in your system. Two, blood and urine test. Police can also stop and test drivers who show signs of being under the influence of a drug, including prescription drugs. Police will do a sobriety assessment, a test to determine if you're affected by drugs. If you fail, you can be arrested and taken to hospital to give samples of blood and urine for drug testing. If you're involved in a crash that's fatal, or likely to be fatal, police can arrest you to take blood and urine tests. If you're admitted to hospital after a crash, medical practitioners can also take blood and urine tests. Blood and urine tests cover a large range of drugs and medicine that can impair drivers. Penalties Drug driving is a serious offence. If you drive with illegal drugs present in your system, you can get a fine and lose your licence. Penalties are even heavier if you drive while under the influence of a drug, including illegal and prescription drugs. You can get a fine, lose your licence and even go to prison. See penalties for drug driving at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Safety first. Illegal drugs increase your crash risk. Safe driving needs clear judgement and concentration. You have to react quickly to changing situations on the road. Illegal drugs cause changes in the brain that can impair your driving ability and increase your risk of having a crash. Stimulants such as ecstasy, cocaine or methamphetamine can make you think you're driving better than you actually are. They can also make you drive aggressively and take more risks. Heroin and other opiates such as morphine, codeine and methadone can make you drowsy and reduce your reaction time. Cannabis can also reduce your reaction time, alter your perception of distance and time and your ability to make the right decisions. Other illegal drugs also affect your driving. Do not drive if you've taken any illegal drugs. See effects of illegal drugs at roadsafety.transport.nsw.gov.au Medicines can affect your ability to drive. Medicines can affect your ability to drive safely. They can cause drowsiness, blurred vision, poor concentration, slower reaction times and changes in behaviour. Some medicines that can affect driving are painkillers, medicines for blood pressure, nausea, allergies, inflammations and fungal infections, tranquilizers, sedatives and sleeping pills, diet pills and cold and flu medication. Read the labels on your medication to determine whether it could affect your driving. If there's a warning label that tells you not to drive, follow that advice. Some labels say a medicine may affect your ability to drive. If you're not sure, get advice from your doctor or pharmacist and do not drive until you've done so. Do not mix drugs and alcohol. While you should never drink, drive or drug drive, it is more dangerous to take drugs while drinking alcohol 
or to combine drugs. This includes prescription and over-the-counter medicines. The effects are unpredictable. Never drive if you've mixed drugs or if you've taken drugs while drinking alcohol. Seat belts. Each year, around 40 people are killed on New South Wales roads because they were not wearing a seat belt, and around 350 people are injured. These deaths and injuries can be prevented by wearing a seatbelt properly. The rules. Wearing a seatbelt. Drivers must wear a seatbelt while driving. Drivers must not have any part of their body outside of the vehicle. Drivers are also responsible for making sure that each passenger is sitting in their own seat that's fitted with a seatbelt. They must not share the seatbelt with another passenger. Each passenger is wearing a properly secured and adjusted seatbelt or is in an approved child car seat suitable for their age and size. There are not more passengers in the vehicle than it's designed to carry. No one travels in an area of the vehicle not designed for passengers. For example, the boot, the floor, the tray of a ute or in a trailer or caravan. And passengers do not travel with any part of their body outside of the vehicle. It's also the responsibility of passengers aged over 16 to sit in their own seat and wear a properly secured and adjusted seatbelt and not travel in an area of the vehicle not designed for passengers and not have any part of their body outside of the vehicle. Exemptions. Drivers with a full, unrestricted license do not have to wear a seatbelt when they are reversing their vehicle or driving a garbage or delivery vehicle travelling below 25 kilometres per hour and need to get out of the vehicle often. Passengers travelling with a driver with a full licence do not have to wear a seatbelt if they are getting or giving urgent and necessary medical treatment, in a garbage or delivery vehicle travelling below 25 kilometres an hour and need to get out of the vehicle often. All drivers, including learner, provisional P1 and P2 drivers and their passengers may be exempt from wearing a seatbelt if they have a medical condition and are carrying an appropriate medical certificate. Where possible, passengers exempt from wearing a seatbelt or in a vehicle that does not have seatbelts fitted should sit in the back seat. Penalties. If you drive while not wearing a seatbelt or fail to make sure your passengers are wearing a seatbelt, you will get a fine and demerit points. Double demerit points also apply. In addition to the driver, passengers aged over 16 will get a fine for not wearing a seatbelt. They can also get a fine for travelling with any part of their body outside of the vehicle. See a list of seatbelt related penalties at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Safety first. Seatbelts save lives. You're much more likely to be killed or seriously injured in a crash if you do not wear a seatbelt. Seatbelts double the chance of survival and reduce the risk of injury in a crash. During a crash, wearing a seatbelt is the most effective way to prevent the driver and passengers from being thrown around in the vehicle, being thrown out of the vehicle, or hitting each other. Wear your seatbelt properly. During a crash, wearing a seatbelt slows your body down and puts the crash forces on the stronger parts of your body. For example, the pelvis and chest area. For a seatbelt to work, you should adjust it low, flat and firm. Low, placed below your hips to fully secure your body weight. Flat, for no twists, turns or folds. And firm. Regularly pull the belt firm to remove any slack. Child car seats. Children aged under 7 years must use an approved suitable child restraint when travelling in a vehicle. A child restraint is a forward-facing or rear-facing child car seat, also referred to as a baby car seat or baby capsule or a booster seat. To be approved, child restraints must meet Australian New Zealand Standard AS NZS 1754. The Rules 
suitable child car restraint. The driver is responsible for children aged under 7 years being secured by an approved child restraint suitable for their age and size. Children up to the age of 6 months must use a rear-facing child car seat. Children aged between 6 months and 4 years must use either a rear-facing child car seat or a forward-facing child car seat with an inbuilt harness. Children aged between 4 and 7 years must use a forward-facing child car seat with an inbuilt harness or an approved booster seat. Children aged 7 years and over who are too small to use a seatbelt should use an approved booster seat or an anchored safety harness. The suggested minimum height for using a seatbelt is 145 centimetres or taller. Fitting child car seats. Child car seats must be properly fitted according to the manufacturer's instructions. This includes adjusting the seat tightly and attaching it to an anchorage point designed for a child car seat. It's recommended that child car seats are fitted by an authorised restraint fitter or at an authorised restraint fitting station. For more information, see Authorised Restraint Fitting Stations at roadsafety.transport.nsw.gov.au Fitting booster seats Booster seats must be used with either a standard lap and sash type seat belt or an approved child safety harness. Never use a booster seat with a lap seat belt alone. Booster seats heavier than 2 kilograms must be anchored to an anchorage point. Children in the front seat Children aged under 4 years must not sit in the front seat of a vehicle that has two or more rows of seats. They can sit in the front seat of a vehicle with only one row of seats but must use an approved child car seat suitable for their age and size. Children aged between 4 and 7 years must not sit in the front seat of a vehicle that has two or more rows of seats unless the available seats in the back row are occupied by other children aged under 7 years. They must use an approved child car seat suitable for their age and size. Exemptions Travelling in a tow truck After a crash or vehicle breakdown, a child aged under 12 months can travel in a tow truck. If a suitable child car seat is not available, they can sit on the lap of another passenger. If the tow truck has two or more rows of seats, they must sit in the back seat. Travelling in a taxi While travelling in a taxi, children up to the age of six months must use a rear-facing child car seat. Children aged between six and 12 months must use either a rear-facing child car seat or a forward-facing child car seat with an inbuilt harness. Children aged over 12 months must use a booster seat or wear a properly adjusted and fastened seat belt. Rules for children in the front seat continue to apply. You can ask the taxi for a child car seat or booster seat when you book or ask to use your own. All taxis must be fitted with a child restraint anchorage point. Medical conditions and disability. Children aged under 7 years with a medical condition or disability can use an alternative child restraint designed for them. They must carry a certificate from the doctor saying they can use this restraint. Penalties. If you drive with children under the age of 16 years who are not using an approved suitable child restraint, you can get a fine and demerit points. Double demerit points also apply. See a list of penalties relating to child restraints at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Safety first. Children in child car seats are less likely to be injured or killed. 
A child who is in an approved child car seat suitable for their age and size is less likely to be injured or killed in a car crash than one who is not. The Child Restraint Evaluation Program independently tests child car seats and rates their level of protection in a crash. See childcarseats.com.au for help choosing a safe child car seat. You must not put a seatbelt around both yourself and a child on your lap. The child can easily be crushed. You must not carry a child in your arms in a vehicle. In a crash, the child can be crushed, thrown around the vehicle or thrown out of the vehicle. Mobile phones. Using a mobile phone while driving affects your attention and response time. This increases your chance of crashing. There are strict rules about how and when you can use your mobile phone while driving. These rules depend on whether you have a full, unrestricted licence or a learner, provisional P1 or P2 licence. The rules. Using a mobile phone while driving. Learner, P1 and P2 drivers. You must not use a mobile phone while driving, even when you're stationary. For example, stopped at lights or stuck in traffic. This includes texting, phone calls, music, emailing, social media, using the internet, maps and navigation, and photography. This applies to mobile phones that are handheld, in a phone holder or hands-free, for example, via Bluetooth. Drivers with a full license. There are only two ways you can use a mobile phone while driving. One, hands-free. You can only use your phone hands-free without touching it to make or receive phone calls or play audio, for example, music and podcasts. Two, in a phone holder. You can only use and touch your phone to make or receive phone calls, play audio, for example, music and podcasts, or use as a driver's aid, for example, maps and navigation apps or dispatch systems. Phone holders must be commercially manufactured and fixed to your vehicle and must not obscure your vision. You must not use a mobile phone while driving for any other function. This includes texting, video calls, emailing, social media, using the internet or photography. When driving, you must not hold a mobile phone in your hand. It must not rest on your leg, be between your shoulder and your ear or any part of your body. Using a mobile phone when parked. All drivers, including learners, P1 and P2 drivers, can use a mobile phone for any function when parked out of the line of traffic. The ignition does not need to be off. Exemptions All drivers including learner, P1 and P2 drivers can use a mobile phone to show their digital driver license when instructed by a police officer, use wallet functions to make a transaction or show a voucher, but only in areas such as a car park, driveway or drive through and when the vehicle is stationary. Penalties Mobile phone detection cameras target illegal mobile phone use in vehicles anywhere, anytime. You can get a fine and demerit points for using a mobile phone illegally. Double demerit points also apply. If you have a learner or P1 licence, you'll go over your demerit point limit and lose your licence. Safety first. Distractions cause crashes. Being distracted when driving, such as by a mobile phone, increases the risk of a crash. A short lapse in concentration can have devastating consequences. Research shows that using a mobile phone while driving can increase the risk of having a casualty crash by four times. Texting using the internet and social media can take your attention away from the task of driving for longer periods of time and further increase the risk. Reducing distractions means reducing crash risk. 
Consider putting your phone on silent, keeping it out of reach, or even switching it off. Focus on reaching your destination safely. Digital screens and GPS. Digital screens, also known as visual display units, includes devices such as tablets and laptops, as well as dashboard screens. The rules. You must not drive with a digital screen on if you can see it or if it could distract another driver, unless you're using it as a driver's aid. In this case, it must be in a holder fixed to the vehicle or built into the vehicle. Driver's aids include navigation devices, for example, GPS, dispatch systems, reversing screens, CCTV security cameras, and vehicle monitoring devices. Your passengers can use digital screens, but the screens must not be visible to you from the normal driving position or distract another driver. Penalties. You can get a fine and demerit points for using a digital screen illegally while driving. Fatigue. Fatigue kills. Each year it accounts for around 20% of road deaths in New South Wales. Fatigue is the feeling of being sleepy, tired or exhausted. It's your body's way of telling you that you need to stop and rest or sleep. Fatigue-related crashes are twice as likely to be fatal. Drivers who are asleep cannot break. Driver fatigue can be just as dangerous as drink driving. It affects your concentration and judgment and slows your reaction time. Research shows that being awake for about 17 hours has a similar effect on driving as a blood alcohol concentration of 0.05. Fatigue can affect anyone, no matter how experienced a driver they are. Fatigue is not only a problem on long drives or at night, it can affect you on shorter, everyday trips like heading off to work in the morning or driving home after a long day. Groups at higher risk of driving tired are shift workers, those who drive for a living, Tradies who tend to start work early, students who tend to be up late, and new parents who are often sleep deprived. While there are no specific road rules to manage fatigue, when you're driving it's your responsibility to make sure that you do not put yourself and others at risk. Safety first. Get at least 8 hours of sleep. Make sure you have a good night's sleep. The average person needs about 8 hours each night to function normally. Teenagers need even more. When you get less hours than you need, you get a sleep debt. The only way to treat your sleep debt is by sleeping. Wait 30 minutes after waking before driving. There's a high risk of fatigue immediately after waking up, when you still feel tired. This is called sleep inertia and generally lasts between 15 to 30 minutes. Avoid driving when you would normally sleep. Avoid driving at night when your body naturally wants to sleep. The risk of having a fatal fatigue related crash is four times greater between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Know when it's time to rest. You can avoid fatigue crashes by recognising the early warning signs. Some of these include yawning, poor concentration, tired or sore eyes, restlessness, drowsiness, slow reactions, boredom, feeling irritable, making fewer and larger steering corrections, missing road signs and having difficulty staying in the lane. If you show any of these signs, park in a safe place and take a break or a nap. Take a nap. Sleep is the only way to overcome tiredness. As soon as you experience any of the signs of fatigue, park in a safe place and have a nap. 20 minutes works best. Do not wait for a micro-sleep. By then it's too late. 
A micro sleep is a brief and unintended loss of consciousness. It happens when you try to stay awake while doing a monotonous task, such as driving. It can last from a few seconds to a few minutes. Signs of micro sleep are head snapping, nodding, and closing your eyes for more than a couple of seconds. A four second micro sleep at 100 kilometers per hour means you'll drive more than 110 meters with your eyes off the road. Take regular breaks. Planning ahead is the best way to avoid becoming tired. Plan to take regular breaks from driving. Even if you don't feel tired, and share the driving with a friend or family member if you can. Watch what you eat and drink. Dehydration can cause fatigue. Some kinds of food and drink remove water from your body. Avoid alcohol, fatty foods, too much coffee, and sweet soft drinks. Drink plenty of water instead. Used rest areas where available. Rest areas or rest stops are places where you can park safely, get out of your vehicle and refresh yourself. They're available 24 hours a day all year round. You must not camp in rest areas, so if you need a longer rest, find a campsite, hotel or motel. You can also take a break at a petrol station, a park, a country town or a driver reviver site. Driver reviver sites operate in New South Wales during peak holiday travel periods. They are places to take a break during a long drive and have a free cup of tea or coffee and a snack. For the location operating times of rest areas and driver reviver sites, see NSW rest area map at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Hooning and street racing Hooning and street racing are irresponsible and dangerous. There are severe penalties for this behaviour. Your vehicle and your driver licence can be taken away on the spot if you take part in these activities. The rules. You must not organise, take part in or promote, including take photos or film, hooning or street racing. This includes driving in a way that deliberately loses traction between your vehicle and the road. For example, burnouts or donuts. Racing other vehicles and speed trials are trying to break a speed record. Penalties. Penalties for hooning and street racing include large fines, demerit points, loss of license, impoundment, taking away your vehicle or number plates and imprisonment. Your vehicle can be impounded for up to three months and you may pay storage fees to get it back. For a second offence, your vehicle may be sold. See street racing and hooning offences at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Negligent or dangerous driving Negligent or dangerous driving causes many crashes on New South Wales roads each year. Negligent or dangerous means driving without the due care and attention reasonably expected of a driver. It puts you other drivers and the public at risk and can result in serious injury or death. The rules. You must not drive a vehicle on a road negligently or at a speed or in a manner dangerous to the public. Penalties. If you drive negligently, you can get a fine and demerit points. If you drive at a speed or in a manner dangerous to the public or cause death or injury due to negligent driving, Penalties include large fines, loss of licence and prison. See penalties for serious driving offences at roads-maritime.transport.newsouthwales.gov.au Safe stopping distance Keeping a safe distance between your vehicle and the vehicle in front is essential for safe driving. Your speed affects the distance you need to stop safely. As you increase speed, you should also increase the distance between your vehicle and the vehicle in front. The rules. You must keep enough distance between you and the vehicle travelling in front so you can, if necessary, stop safely to avoid colliding with the vehicle. If you're driving a long vehicle, 
over seven and a half metres, including towed vehicles, you must drive at least 60 metres behind other long vehicles, unless you're driving on a multi-lane road, driving in a built-up area, or overtaking. Penalties. You can get a fine and demerit points if you drive too close to another vehicle. Safety first. Road positioning. Road positioning means keeping enough room around your vehicle to avoid hazards. This is also referred to as buffering. This can mean keeping to the left at the top of a hill or a sharp corner so oncoming vehicles can drive past you safely. Or it can mean not getting too close to parked cars so you can avoid hitting opening doors. Always check your mirrors before changing your position on the road. Crash avoidance space. As a driver, you should adjust your speed and position to keep a safe distance from vehicles in front and to the sides of your vehicle. This is called your crash avoidance space. Many of the crashes that happen each day in New South Wales could be avoided if drivers kept their crash avoidance space. To work out the crash avoidance space to the front of your vehicle, you need to take into account two key factors, reaction time and response time. Reaction time is the time a driver needs to see and understand a situation, decide on a response and then start to take action. A driver who is fit and alert and not affected by alcohol, drugs or fatigue needs about one and a half seconds to react to a hazard. Response time is the time a driver needs to take action. Most people need at least one and a half seconds to respond, for example, to brake. In good driving conditions, most people need a three second crash avoidance space, often called the three second gap, to react and respond to a situation safely and avoid a crash. You should increase your crash avoidance space to four or more seconds when driving in poor conditions, such as on unsealed, dirt or gravel, icy or wet roads, or at night. You can help other vehicles, such as trucks and buses, to keep their crash avoidance space by not cutting in front of them. Working out your crash avoidance space. To calculate your crash avoidance space when driving, select an object or mark on the left hand side of the road. For example, a power pole, a tree or a sign. As the rear of the vehicle in front of you passes this object, count three seconds. 1001, 1002, 1003. If your vehicle passes the object after you finish counting, this is enough crash avoidance space. If your vehicle passes the object before you finish counting, you're following too closely. Slow down and repeat the count until there's a three second gap between you and the vehicle in front. Driving speed and crash avoidance space. The three second gap changes depending on your speed. The faster you're going, the longer it takes to stop and avoid a crash. At 60 kilometers per hour, the space needed to avoid a crash is 50 meters. At 80 kilometers per hour, the space needed to avoid a crash is 67 meters. At 100 kilometers per hour, the space needed to avoid a crash is 84 meters. And at 110 kilometers per hour, the space needed to avoid a crash is 92 meters. Most drivers underestimate the distance needed to stop their vehicle. When you drive just five kilometers over the speed limit, you need much further to stop, even if you brake hard. If there's potential for another vehicle or hazard to enter your crash avoidance space, slow down to create a buffer and prepare to stop if necessary. It's important to keep your crash avoidance space for all potentially hazardous situations, including blind corners and crests. Braking technique. Correct braking is done in two stages. Put light pressure on the brake pedal and pause by setting up the brakes. Progressively apply the necessary braking pressure. Squeeze. 
Two-stage braking makes braking more effective, reduces the chance of skidding and gives you better control. Harsh or excessive braking pressure may cause skidding and a loss of control, particularly on wet or gravel roads. Scanning. Scanning is essential for safe driving. Scanning is keeping your eyes moving, checking in one area for a couple of seconds and moving your eyes to another area. When scanning, look in the distance, at the road surface, to the left and right, and regularly at your mirrors and instruments. Common crashes in New South Wales. Almost 80% of all New South Wales casualty crashes, where a person is killed or injured, fall into five crash types. One, colliding with the rear of another vehicle, also known as a rear ender. Two, colliding with another vehicle coming from an adjacent direction, the left or the right, also known as a T-bone. Three, colliding with another vehicle coming from the opposite direction also known as a head-on collision. 4. Running off the road on a straight section and hitting an object or a parked vehicle. And 5. Running off the road on a curve or a bend and hitting an object or a parked vehicle. These crashes are also the most common crash types for provisional drivers. They can be avoided if you follow the road rules and manage your speed and fatigue, keep a safe stopping distance and take extra care at intersections and when overtaking. See crashes on page 174 for what to do if you're involved in a crash. Sharing with other road users. Everyone who uses the roads to drive, ride or walk has a responsibility to share the road with others. Be aware of who you're sharing the road with and how you can take care around them. Allow enough time to stop safely for pedestrians. Give other vehicles enough room to stop and turn. Keep an eye out for bicycle and motorcycle riders. If somebody does something that startles you or is aggressive, stay calm. You must not respond in a threatening or aggressive manner. This kind of behaviour, often called road rage, is dangerous and illegal. By respecting other road users, you can help make the roads safer for everyone. Pedestrians. Pedestrians include people who are walking or running, pushing a bicycle, in a wheelchair, using a mobility scooter or motorised wheelchair, or using a skateboard, foot scooter or rollerblades. Pedestrians are vulnerable road users because they have no protection if a vehicle collides with them. As a driver, it's your responsibility to help keep them safe. For rules and safety tips for pedestrians, see pedestrians at roadsafety.transport.nsw.gov.au Give way to pedestrians. As a driver, you must give way to pedestrians at pedestrian and children's crossings, when turning at intersections, when doing a U-turn, in shared zones, and when entering or leaving a driveway. Always slow down and be prepared to stop if there's any danger of colliding with a pedestrian, even if they do not have the right of way or are jaywalking, crossing the road illegally. Look out for vulnerable pedestrians. Children. Children have not developed the skills to understand and react to danger. They're still learning where to cross safely, and they can find it hard to judge the speed and distance of vehicles. This means they can act unpredictably around traffic. Take extra care near children playing, walking or riding bikes near the edge of the road. Schools, particularly where children are arriving or leaving. School buses or school bus zones where children may be getting on or off the bus. Older people. Older people may be slower than other pedestrians and may not see you until you're very close. Slow down and give them extra time to cross. People affected by alcohol or drugs. People who have been drinking or taking drugs are one of the most common groups involved in road crashes. Alcohol and drugs slow brain functions, increase risk taking and reduce people's ability to judge speed and distance. 
This also applies to drink or drug affected pedestrians and their ability to cross the road safely. Take extra care when driving near licensed clubs, hotels, restaurants, festivals and other events. Slow down and take extra care. Near shopping centres and transport. Pedestrians may not be paying attention around shopping centres and transport hubs, such as bus and tram stops. Slow down and watch out for anyone that might step out onto the road. Watch out for pedestrians walking between parked vehicles or opening car doors. In poor visibility and conditions. More than half of all pedestrian fatalities occur in darkness or at dusk. Slow down and prepare to stop when visibility is poor. For example, in rain or fog or at night, dusk or dawn. Pedestrians are harder to see when they're also more likely to hurry and take risks. When pedestrians are walking on the road. Pedestrians must use a footpath or nature strip if there's one. If there's not one, or it's not practical to use, they can walk on the road as long as they walk in the direction of oncoming traffic, if practical, or keep to the far side of the road. Do not walk alongside more than one other person unless overtaking. People using mobility scooters or motorised wheelchairs can do the same. Watch out for people using skateboards, foot scooters and rollerblades. They can use roads with speed limits up to 50 km per hour and no white dividing line. When reversing, pedestrians, particularly children, are at greatest risk when vehicles are reversing. This is because the driver cannot see them as well. Take extra care when you're reversing, particularly when you're entering or leaving a driveway. Only reverse for the distance that's necessary. Mobility scooters and motorised wheelchairs. People with a disability who cannot walk or find it difficult to walk may use mobility scooters or motorised wheelchairs. They must follow the same rules as pedestrians. To share the footpath safely with other pedestrians, the vehicles must not be able to go faster than 10 km per hour. Drivers should look out for mobility scooters or motorised wheelchairs. Take particular care when entering or leaving a driveway as they can be difficult to see and move faster than other pedestrians. Skateboards, foot scooters and rollerblades. People who use skateboards, foot scooters and rollerblades have the same rights and responsibilities as pedestrians. They must follow the same road rules, but also have some special rules. On footpaths, they must keep to the left and give way to other pedestrians. On bicycle and pedestrian paths, they must use the bicycle section and keep out of the way of bicycles. They can use the road but only during daylight hours if the speed limit is 50 km per hour or less or the road has no white dividing line or it's a single lane one way street. As a driver you should take care when you see people using skateboards, foot scooters and rollerblades on the road. If the road is uneven or slippery they may be unstable. Be careful when entering or leaving a driveway as they can be difficult to see and move faster than other pedestrians. Skateboards and scooters with a motor must only be used on private land. Bicycle riders. Bicycle riders have a right to use the road and have the same responsibilities as other road users. They generally follow the same road rules as drivers, but have additional rules they must follow, such as wearing an approved bicycle helmet. For rules and safety advice for bicycle riders, See the Bicycle Rider Handbook at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Bicycle riders are vulnerable users and do not have the same protection as people in vehicles and can be seriously injured or killed in a crash. As a driver, it's your responsibility to help keep bicycle riders safe. Keep a lookout. Bicycles can be harder to see than other vehicles. Watch out for them at all times, especially at dawn and dusk and at night. Bicycle riders often ride in the far left of the left lane. As a driver, it's your responsibility to check your surroundings. Take extra care and check your blind spots for bicycles when changing lanes or turning left. Be aware that bicycle riders can overtake on the left of vehicles. They can ride to the left of the line that marks the edge of the road or the edge line. 
they can ride in bus lanes, tram lanes, transit lanes and truck lanes, but not in bus only lanes or tramways. They can ride on motorways and freeways unless a sign says they must not. Sometimes bicycle riders can ride as fast as or faster than a car, particularly in slow traffic. Never underestimate their speed. Allow riders a full lane. Bicycle riders must use bicycle lanes, part of the road dedicated to bicycles where there is one. If there's not, or it's not practical to use, they have the right to ride on the road. This includes riding in the middle of a lane. Sometimes they may need the full lane because of rough road edges or gravel. Be prepared to slow down and give them the room to ride away from the curb. Bicycle riders can ride two abreast, side by side, as long as they are within 1.5 metres of each other. Another bicycle rider can overtake them. Keep your distance when overtaking. When overtaking bicycles, you must allow a distance of at least one metre between you and the rider when the speed limit is 60 kilometres per hour or less, or 1.5 metre if it is more than 60 kilometres per hour. If other drivers beep their horns to pressure you to pass a bicycle, stay calm. Only pass when you're sure it's safe. You can cross single or double white lines to pass bicycles, but only if you have a clear view of approaching traffic and it's safe to do so. Take care at intersections. Look out for bicycles before turning at intersections and roundabouts. Bicycle riders can do hook turns when turning right at intersections unless a sign says they must not. This means they use the left lane to turn right. Bicycle riders must give way to vehicles leaving the intersection. As a driver, you must take care to avoid colliding with them. Some intersections have places for bicycle riders to stop at traffic lights when the traffic lights are red. These are called a bicycle storage area and vehicles must not enter them while the traffic lights are red. Check before opening car doors. You must not open your door into the path of a bicycle. Before getting out of your vehicle, check your rear view and side view mirrors and over your shoulder. Motorcycle riders. Motorcycle riders have the same rights and responsibilities as other drivers on the road. They generally follow the same road rules, but have additional rules they must follow, such as wearing an approved motorcycle helmet. For rules and safety advice for motorcycle riders, see Motorcycle Riders Handbook at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au. Motorcycle riders are much more vulnerable than people in cars. Per kilometre travelled, they're 25 times more likely to be killed in a road crash. They're harder to see and do not have the body of a car to protect them. They're also less stable because they only have two wheels. Motorcycle riders are at most risk on busy roads, at intersections and when changing lanes, on country roads, particularly around bends. As a driver, it's your responsibility to help keep motorcycle riders safe. Keep a lookout. Always look out for motorcycles as they're smaller than cars and harder to see. Motorcycles can be hidden behind a truck or a car. Check your side and rear mirrors and your blind spot by looking over your shoulder regularly, especially before merging and changing lanes and turning at intersections. Watch out for lane filtering. Lane filtering is when motorcycle riders ride at low speeds between traffic moving in the same direction. A motorcycle rider can lane filter if they have a full motorcycle rider license, they're travelling at less than 30 km per hour, the traffic is stopped or moving slowly, and it's safe to do so. Motorcycle riders must not lane filter next to curbs or parked vehicles or in school zones. Leave space when overtaking. When overtaking motorcycles, leave as much space as you would when overtaking a vehicle. Do not drive alongside. 
Do not drive alongside and in the same lane as a motorcycle. They have a right to a full width lane to ride safely. Motorcycle riders can ride two abreast side by side as long as they're within 1.5 metres of each other. Another motorcycle rider can overtake them. Keep a safe distance. Drive at a safe distance from motorcycles. They may need to avoid hazards such as flying debris, oil slicks and poor road conditions. They may also need extra time to stop. Horse riders. Horse riders and horse-drawn vehicles have the right to share our roads. They have the same rights and responsibilities as other drivers, motorcycle riders and bicycle riders. They follow the same road rules but also have some special rules. Horse riders can ride on any road unless a sign says they must not. They can ride two abreast side by side as long as they're within 1.5 metres of each other. More than two horse riders can ride side by side but only if one is overtaking the other or they are droving stock. Drivers should be mindful that horses can be unpredictable. If you're passing a horse, whether it's been ridden or led, or it's pulling a vehicle, you should slow down and leave plenty of room, stop if the rider is having difficulty with their horse, and never use your horn or rev your engine. Trucks and buses. Trucks and buses are heavy vehicles. A crash involving a heavy vehicle is more likely to cause serious injury or death because of its size, weight and length. All road users need to take extra care and be aware of heavy vehicles. For rules and safety advice for heavy vehicles, see the Heavy Vehicle Driver Handbook at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au. Give them plenty of room to stop. Heavy vehicles such as trucks and buses cannot stop quickly. In traffic, bus and truck drivers try to keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. Do not cut in front of a truck or a bus. Give them enough room to stop safely. When a bus or truck is approaching a traffic light that's changing to red, do not pull in front of it. It may not be able to stop in time to avoid a crash. Be aware of truck and bus blind spots. Due to their size and length, trucks and buses have larger blind spots than an average vehicle. This means a truck or bus driver may not be able to see your vehicle. Take care when driving next to or behind them. Trucks and buses also have a large blind spot at the front of their vehicle. This means the driver may not always see pedestrians, bicycles or motorcycles in front of them. Give them enough room to turn. Heavy vehicles may need to take up more than one lane when turning at intersections and roundabouts. Make sure you give them enough room. Do not assume that they can stay in completely in their own lane. Do not put your vehicle in the path of a large heavy vehicle when it's turning. You may be crushed. It's safest to stay behind and wait until the vehicle has completed the turn. There are also rules that must be obeyed. See overtaking on page 124 for rules about overtaking long vehicles with a do not overtake turning vehicle sign. Slow down for buses with flashing lights. If you're travelling in the same direction as a bus with a 40 when lights flash sign on the back, you must not overtake it at more than 40 km per hour while the lights on the top are flashing. This is because the bus is picking up or dropping off children. Take extra care around oversized vehicles. Oversized vehicles are longer, wider or heavier than standard trucks. They move slowly, take up more road, sometimes more than one lane, and take longer to stop. Pilot vehicles with yellow flashing lights and an oversized load ahead sign may drive with an oversized vehicle. If the vehicle is unusually large, police may also escort it and direct traffic. When approaching an oversized vehicle, take care and reduce your speed. 
keep to the left of the centre line and be prepared to move to the left side of the road if necessary. Stopping, giving way and turning. Signs, road markings, traffic lights and roundabouts help everyone share the road safely. They make it clear who has the right of way. Signs showing when you must stop, give way or turn are regulatory signs and must be obeyed by law. Where there are no signs or traffic lights, there are rules for who must give way in different situations. Stop signs and stop lines. Stop signs and stop lines control traffic at intersections. A stop sign is a regulatory sign and must be obeyed by law. When you approach a stop sign and stop line, a single unbroken line, you must come to a complete stop. You must stop before the line and as close as possible to the line. If there's a stop sign but no line at an intersection, you must stop before and as close as possible to the intersection. At all other places where there's a stop sign but no line, you must stop before and as close as possible to the sign. There are different rules for giving way at stop signs and stop lines at intersections, railway level crossings, pedestrian crossings. At other places with a stop line or sign, you must give way to any vehicle or pedestrian at or near the sign or line. You must stop at a stop sign held by a traffic controller, for example, at roadworks and children's crossings. You must remain at a complete stop until the controller stops showing the sign or signals you can go. Some intersections with traffic lights have a stop sign with three black dots. If the lights are not working or are flashing yellow, you must follow the same rules as for a stop sign. The stop sign ahead sign warns you that you're approaching a stop sign. You should slow down and prepare to stop. Give way signs and give way lines. Give way signs and give way lines are used at intersections to control traffic. A give way sign is a regulatory sign and must be obeyed by law. When you approach a give way sign or give way line, a single broken line, you must slow down and prepare to stop. There are different rules for giving way at give way signs and give way lines at intersections, narrow bridges and roads, and pedestrian crossings. At other places with a give way sign or line, you must give way to any vehicle or pedestrian at or near the sign or line. The give way sign ahead sign warns you that you're approaching a give way sign. You should slow down and prepare to stop. Traffic lights. Traffic lights regulate traffic flow and make intersections safer for drivers and pedestrians. You must always obey traffic lights even when there are no other vehicles on the road or it's late at night. Stopping at traffic lights. A red light means you must stop. You must stop as close as possible behind the stop line. A yellow or amber light means you must stop. You can only go through a yellow light if you cannot stop safely before the stop line. You should not stop suddenly and you should not speed up to get through a yellow light. A green light means that you can go through the intersection if it's safe to do so. You must also follow these rules for temporary traffic lights at roadworks. Turn signals. Some traffic lights have arrows to control traffic turning right or left. A red arrow means you must not turn. You must stop behind the stop line until the arrow turns green or disappears. A green arrow means you can turn in that direction when it's safe to do so. A yellow or amber arrow means you must stop. You can only go through a yellow light if you cannot stop safely before the stop line. 
when a yellow or amber arrow is flashing, this means you can turn in that direction. You must give way to pedestrians crossing the road you're turning into. See turning left and right on page 106 for rules when turning when there are no signals. Turning left on a red light. When you see this sign at traffic lights, you must stop at the red light and then turn left when it's clear. When turning, you must give way to traffic approaching from the right. Turning right at traffic lights. When there's a green traffic light but no right arrow signal, wait until oncoming traffic clears or breaks and then turn right. If the lights change to yellow or red while you're in the intersection, you must turn right as soon as it's safe to do so. You must not make a U-turn at traffic lights unless there is a U-turn permitted sign. Signals for other vehicles. Buses. Some traffic lights have a B signal for buses driving in a bus lane or a bus only lane. The B signal is usually white on a black background. Some traffic lights also have red and yellow B signals. When the B signal lights up, only buses can go through the intersection. This signal lights up shortly before the usual traffic lights change. When the B signal turns red or yellow, buses must stop at the intersection. Trams or light rail. Some traffic lights have a T signal for trams. The T signal is usually white on a black background. When the T signal lights up, only trams can go through the intersection. When the T signal turns red or yellow, the tram must stop or prepare to stop. Bicycle riders. Some traffic lights have bicycle signals for bicycle riders. These signals are used where bicycles are allowed to ride across a pedestrian crossing and also at some intersections. When the bicycle symbol turns green, bicycle riders can go through the crossing or intersection. They must stop when the bicycle symbol turns red. Vehicles must not stop in the area reserved for bicycles at traffic lights. Pedestrian signals. Most traffic lights have areas where pedestrians can cross. Red and green pedestrian symbols or lights show them when to cross. Pedestrians must follow these signals. Some signals have pedestrian countdown timers which show how many seconds a pedestrian has left to cross the road. When you're turning at an intersection, you must give way to pedestrians crossing the road that you're turning into. Even if the pedestrian symbol or lights are flashing red, you must give way to any pedestrians still crossing. You must also stop for pedestrians crossing at a pelican crossing. A red pedestrian symbol, pedestrians must not start to cross. Flashing red pedestrian symbol, pedestrians must not start to cross but can finish crossing. Green pedestrian symbol, pedestrians can start to cross. Pedestrians can walk in any direction when the green pedestrian symbol is shown. Pedestrian countdown timers show the number of seconds until the lights change. Red light speed cameras. Red light speed cameras detect both red light and speeding offences at high risk intersections. The camera detects your vehicle if you cross over the stop line or enter the intersection after the traffic light has turned red. The camera also detects your vehicle if you go over the speed limit at any time whether the traffic line is red, amber or green. See speed limits on page 32 to find out more about the rules and penalties for speeding. Roundabouts. Roundabouts manage the traffic flow at intersections. 
they move traffic in one direction around a central island. Vehicles can turn left or right, go straight ahead, or make a full U-turn. When you approach a roundabout, you must slow down or stop to give way to all vehicles already in the roundabout. This means giving way to vehicles already in the roundabout on your right and vehicles that have entered the roundabout from your left or from directly opposite you. So other drivers know what you intend to do, you must indicate when turning at a roundabout. Continue to indicate as you turn. When you leave, you must indicate left if practical. Stop indicating as soon as you have left the roundabout. On multi-lane roundabouts, you must follow the direction of the arrows or signs on the road. Roundabout signs. These signs warn you that you're approaching a roundabout. The yellow and black sign is roundabout ahead. The red, white and black sign is give way to vehicles on the roundabout. Turning left. On approach, you must indicate left and turn using the left lane unless arrows show you you can use other lanes to turn left. You must give way to all vehicles already on the roundabout. You must continue to indicate left as you turn. Going straight ahead. On approach, you can use any lane to go straight ahead unless arrows show the lane is for left or right turns only. You must give way to all vehicles already on the roundabout. When you leave, you must indicate left if practical to do so. Turning right or making a full U-turn. On approach, you must indicate right and turn using the right lane, unless arrows show you can use other lanes to turn right. You must give way to all vehicles already on the roundabout. You must continue to indicate right as you turn. When you leave, you must indicate left if practical. Changing lanes. Plan ahead when approaching a roundabout to avoid changing lanes when you're in the roundabout. If you need to change lanes, you must indicate and give way to any vehicle in the lane you're moving into. You can only change lanes where there's a broken white line. You must not change lanes if the line is unbroken. Exiting. When exiting a roundabout, you must signal left if it is practical to do so. You must stop indicating as soon as you have exited the roundabout. When you travel straight ahead on a small single lane roundabout, it may not be practical to indicate left when exiting. Pedestrians and roundabouts. When turning left or right at a roundabout, you do not have to give way to pedestrians unless there's a pedestrian crossing. However, you must always take care to avoid colliding with a pedestrian. Bicycles and roundabouts. Look out for bicycles on a roundabout. They are entitled to use a full lane. Bicycle riders must follow the same rules as other drivers on roundabouts. However, on a multi-lane roundabout, they can use the left lane to turn right. When turning, they must give way to vehicles leaving the roundabout. Look out for bicycles stopped in the left lane who are giving way to vehicles leaving the roundabout. Intersections. Around half of all crashes on New South Wales roads happen at intersections. You should approach an intersection at a speed that allows you to stop and give way to vehicles in or approaching the intersection. Look out for motorcycle riders. More than half of all motorcycle crashes involving other vehicles happen at intersections. Different rules control traffic and make it clear who has right of way at intersections. The rules depend on whether the intersection has stop signs, give way signs, no signs or lines, traffic lights or roundabout. If you see police or a traffic controller at an intersection, you must follow their hand signals and directions. 
stop sign and line at intersections. When you stop at a stop sign or stop line, you must give way to vehicles driving in, entering or approaching the intersection except for an oncoming vehicle that's also at a stop sign or line and is turning right, an oncoming vehicle that's at a give way sign or line and is turning right, a vehicle turning left using a slip lane or a vehicle making a U-turn. When you're turning left or right at a stop sign or line, you must also give way to pedestrians crossing the road that you're turning into. In the diagram, two cars are at a stop sign at opposite sides of an intersection. The car turning right, car A, must give way to the car going straight ahead, car B. Give way sign and line at intersections. When you're at a give way sign or give way line, you must give way to vehicles driving in, entering or approaching the intersection, except for an oncoming vehicle that's also at a give way sign or line and is turning right, an incoming vehicle that's at a stop sign or line and is turning right, a vehicle turning left using a slip lane, or a vehicle making a U-turn. When you're turning left or right at a give way sign or line, you must also give way to pedestrians crossing the road that you're turning into. In the diagram, two cars are at a give way sign at opposite sides of an intersection. The car turning right, car B, must wait to give way to the car turning left, car A. Give way rules at intersections without signs. Some intersections do not have signs, traffic lights or roundabout. At these intersections, when you turn across another vehicle's path, you must give way to that vehicle. You must also give way to pedestrians crossing the road that you're turning into. If another driver does not give way to you, do not force them or yourself into a dangerous situation. Turning right at an intersection. When you're turning right at an intersection without signs, you must give way to a vehicle approaching from the right, an oncoming vehicle going straight ahead, an oncoming vehicle turning left, pedestrians crossing the road you're turning into. When you and another vehicle are turning right at an intersection, both vehicles can turn at the same time and pass in front of each other. In the first diagram, two cars are travelling in opposite directions. The car turning right, car A, must give way to the car going straight ahead, car B. In the second diagram, two cars are travelling in opposite directions. The car turning right, car A, must give way to the car turning left, car B. In the third diagram, when two cars are at opposite sides of an intersection and are both turning right, they can pass in front of each other while turning. Turning left at an intersection. When you're turning left at an intersection without signs, you must give way to vehicles on your right. You must also give way to pedestrians crossing the road you're turning into. See slip lanes on page 148 for rules for turning left at an intersection with a slip lane. In the diagram, a car, car A, is turning left at an intersection and another car, car B, is travelling straight across the intersection from the right. Car A must give way to car B. T intersections. If you're driving on a road that ends at a T intersection, you must give way to all vehicles driving on the continuing road, unless a sign says otherwise. If you're turning right from the continuing road, you must give way to oncoming vehicles on the continuing road going straight ahead or vehicles turning left at the intersection. 
This is also the rule for T intersections where the continuing road goes around a corner rather than a straight. In the first diagram, the car turning right from the road ending at a T intersection, car A, must give way to the car going straight ahead on the continuing road, car B. In the second diagram, at a T intersection where the continuing road goes around a corner, the car leaving the continuing road, car B, must give way to the oncoming car on the continuing road, car A. Keeping intersections clear. You must not enter an intersection unless there's space for your vehicle in your lane on the other side of the intersection. This includes all intersections and crossings, including intersections with traffic lights, railway level crossings and pedestrian crossings. Some intersections and roads have keep clear markings on the road. You must not stop in a keep clear area. Turning left and right. Before turning, you should always check for other vehicles on your left and right. You must always give way to pedestrians crossing the road you're turning into. Signs showing where you must or must not turn or enter are regulatory signs and must be obeyed by law. See intersections on page 98 for the rules for giving way when turning at intersections. See traffic lights on page 85 for rules when turning at traffic lights. Plan ahead when turning. Plan your turns early so you're in the correct lane or part of the road and have enough time to indicate. In the diagram, when a car, car A, is turning right then wants to turn immediately left into the road marked X, it should turn right from the left lane. If necessary, you can drive on, across or outside edge lines for up to 100 metres when turning left or right. You must follow the lane lines when turning. If there are no lines, you should stay in the same lane while you turn. Turning left. When making a left turn, you must indicate left, move close to the left side of the road, Keep to the left side of the road you're turning into. Use a slip lane where there is one. And when driving on multi-lane roads, you must turn left from the left lane or from a lane with an arrow pointing left. When you see a no left turn sign, you must not turn left. When you're driving in the left lane and you see a left lane must turn left sign, you must turn left. The left only sign means you must turn left. Turning right. When making a right turn, you must indicate right, follow any road markings for turning such as lane lines and painted arrows, move as close as possible to the dividing line on the road you're turning from. Stay in the same lane as you turn from one road to another. When driving on a multi-lane road, you must turn right from the right lane or from a lane with an arrow pointing right. You can turn right across any type of dividing line to enter or leave a road or a road-related area such as a driveway or car park. Before you turn right, your front wheels and car should face straight ahead so they do not block oncoming traffic. In the diagram, you can cross a single or double dividing line when entering or leaving a road. When you see a no right turn sign, you must not turn right or make a U-turn. When you're driving in the right lane and you see a right lane must turn right sign, you must turn right. The right only sign means you must turn right. Long and oversized vehicles. Some oversized or long vehicles 
have a do not overtake turning vehicle sign. These vehicles may use more than one lane when turning right or left. Do not put your vehicle in the path of a large, heavy vehicle when it's turning. You may be crushed. It's safest to stay behind and wait until the vehicle has completed the turn. See overtaking on page 124 for rules about overtaking long vehicles with a do not overtake turning vehicle sign. No entry. When you see the no entry sign, you must not turn into or enter the road. The no bicycle sign means that bicycle riders must not ride beyond the sign. Bicycles and hook turns. Bicycles can use a hook turn to turn right. This means they use the left lane to turn right. When doing a hook turn, a bicycle rider must approach the intersection from the far left side, keep to the far left side while entering the intersection, keep clear of any marked pedestrian crossing, give way to vehicles approaching from their right, and if there are traffic lights, stay to the left side and wait until the light changes to green. As a driver, you must take care to avoid colliding with bicycles turning at intersections. Bicycle riders must give a hand signal when turning right. However, they do not have to give a hand signal when making a hook turn to turn right. In the diagram, the bicycle rider waits at the far left side of the road. The bicycle rider keeps to the far left as they turn. The bicycle rider turns when it is safe. U-turns and three-point turns. You should always take extra care when making a U-turn or a three-point turn. Before you turn, indicate and check your mirrors and blind spots to make sure there's no traffic approaching from any direction. After you turn, check your mirrors and blind spots again, indicate, and only pull out when it's clear and safe. U-turns. You must not make a U-turn at intersections without traffic lights where there's a no U-turn sign, at intersections with traffic lights unless there's a U-turn permitted sign, across a single unbroken dividing line or double unbroken dividing line, across double dividing lines with an unbroken line closer to you, or on motorways and freeways. The no U-turn sign is a regulatory sign and must be obeyed by law. When making a U-turn, you must have a clear view of approaching traffic, start your U-turn from the marked lane nearest to the centre of the road, start your U-turn to the left of the centre of the road if there are no lane markings, make the turn without obstructing traffic, Give way to vehicles and pedestrians and indicate before you start to turn. Three-point turn. You can do a three-point turn when a road is not wide enough to do a U-turn. It's called a three-point turn because you usually need to do at least three turns to face the opposite direction. A three-point turn generally takes longer to do than a U-turn. When you are in heavy traffic or on a busy road, it's safer to drive around the block or use a roundabout to turn around. Indicating Indicating, also called signalling, is when you use your indicator to warn other drivers that you intend to move left or right. For example, when you turn, overtake or change lanes. Plan your turns, lane changes and moves early so you're in the correct lane and have enough time to indicate. Always check for other vehicles by looking in your mirrors, checking your blind spots and over your shoulder. When to indicate. You must indicate before you turn right or left, before you move to the right or left, before you make a U-turn or three-point turn, 
before you change lanes, including when overtaking, before you merge with another lane, before you pull over to stop or park, before you pull out from the side of the road, before you turn right or left at a roundabout, before you go straight ahead at a T-intersection where the continuing road curves off to the right or left, and before you leave a roundabout if practical. Make sure your indicator is turned off after each turn or lane change. Before pulling out from the side of the road or a parking area, you must indicate for at least five seconds. Hand signals. If your vehicle is fitted with indicators, they must be working and clearly visible. If they're not working, you can get a defect notice. If your indicators are not working or not clearly visible, or your vehicle is not fitted with them, you must give a hand signal when turning right or stopping. Bicycle riders must give a hand signal when turning right. Pedestrian crossings. You must give way to pedestrians crossing at a pedestrian crossing. Pedestrian crossings are marked by signs and lines on the road. There are different types of pedestrian crossings, each with different rules for drivers. When approaching a pedestrian crossing, you should drive at a speed that allows you to slow down and stop before the crossing. If children or elderly people are crossing, you may need to give them extra time to cross. Always slow down and prepare to give way to pedestrians. Pedestrian crossing lines and signs. Pedestrian crossings are usually marked by white parallel stripes on the roads. They can also have a yellow sign showing a pair of legs. Pedestrian crossings are also called zebra crossings. Some pedestrian crossings have signs warning you that you're approaching a crossing. Zigzag lines are sometimes marked on the road leading up to a pedestrian crossing. These lines increase visibility and warn you that you're approaching a crossing. At a pedestrian crossing, you must give way to pedestrians crossing. You must not overtake a vehicle that stopped or has stopped to give way to pedestrians who are crossing. You must not drive onto the crossing if the road ahead is blocked. If there's a stop sign close to the crossing, you must stop at the sign even if you had just stopped at the crossing. Pelican crossings. A pelican crossing is a pedestrian crossing with traffic lights. Pedestrians push the button when they want to cross. Most pelican crossings have the same lights and pedestrian signals as normal traffic lights. You must stop at a red light and give way to pedestrians crossing the road. Some pelican crossings have a different colour sequence for the traffic lights. After the red light, a yellow or amber light flashes for vehicles and a red pedestrian signal flashes for pedestrians. When the yellow light starts flashing, you can drive through the crossing if there are no pedestrians. Children's crossings. Children's crossings are part-time crossings. They usually operate during school zone hours and at other approved times and locations. When a children's crossing is operating, it's marked by red-orange flags at both sides. When you see the flags, you must slow down and stop before the white stripes or stop line to give way to pedestrians. You must remain at a complete stop until all pedestrians have left the crossing. If the flags are not displayed, it's not operating as a children's crossing. Some children's crossings are combined with a pedestrian crossing. When the flags are displayed, children's crossing rules apply. When the flags are removed, pedestrian crossing rules apply. School crossing supervisors. Some children's crossings are controlled by school crossing supervisors. When you see a supervisor holding a stop, children crossing sign, 
you must slow down and stop. You must remain at a complete stop until all pedestrians have left the crossing and the school crossing supervisor is no longer showing the sign. High pedestrian activity areas. Some areas have more pedestrians than others, such as shopping strips and near schools, parks or swimming pools. These areas may have a lower speed limit and signs warning you to look out for pedestrians. When you see these signs, you should prepare to slow down. Pedestrian refuges. A pedestrian refuge is an island in the middle of the road. The island allows pedestrians to cross the road in two stages. Pedestrian refuges have signs to warn you to slow down and look out for pedestrians. Railway level crossings. Railway level crossing can be dangerous. Trains are fast and heavy and cannot stop quickly. When approaching a level crossing, always slow down and look and listen for trains. You must not drive onto a level crossing while a train is approaching or if the road on the other side of the crossing is blocked. Level crossing warning signs. Most level crossings have signs to warn you that you're approaching a crossing. Queuing on level crossings. You must not block a level crossing. Know the length of your vehicle and never cross unless your vehicle can clear the track completely. Parking near level crossings. You must not stop or park on a level crossing or within 20 metres of either side of a crossing. Stopping at level crossings. You must stop at a level crossing when there's a stop sign, a gate is closed or boom gate is down, red lights are flashing, a railway employee signals you to stop. When there's a give way sign at a level crossing, you must slow down, look both ways and stop if a train is coming. You must not drive through a level crossing until the signals have stopped flashing and the gates or boom gates are fully open. If you have stopped at a stop or give way sign at the crossing, do not drive through until it's safe. Level crossings without signals. Take extra care when there are no gates, boom gates or flashing lights at a crossing, particularly in the country. When you see a warning sign, slow down and look and listen for trains in both directions. If you stop for one train, always check that another one is not approaching before you drive through. Narrow bridges and roads. When you approach a narrow bridge or a narrow road with a give way sign, you must slow down and prepare to stop. You must give way to vehicles approaching from the opposite direction. In the diagram, car B must give way to car A on a bridge. If there's no give way sign, you should still give way to approaching vehicles. Look out for oversized vehicles as they may drive down the centre of a bridge and take up more than one lane. Be prepared to stop and wait for the vehicle to exit the bridge. One-way streets. One-way and two-way signs are regulatory signs and must be obeyed by law. When you see a one-way sign, you must only drive in the direction shown by the arrow on the sign. When turning right from a one-way street, you must turn from the far right side of the road. When you see a two-way sign, the road has lanes travelling in both directions and you can drive in either direction. In the diagram, keep to the right when turning right from a one-way street. Overtaking and merging Take care when overtaking, changing lanes and merging. If you have any doubts, wait until it's safer. Before overtaking, changing lanes or merging, always check your mirrors and blind spots. 
especially look out for motorcycle riders, bicycle riders and large vehicles. Make sure you indicate to let others know your intention. Always give other vehicles enough room to overtake, merge or change lanes. Overtaking Be careful when overtaking. You need to accurately judge the space you need to pass another vehicle safely. If you have any doubts, wait until it's safer. Before overtaking, always check your mirrors and blind spots. Motorcycles and bicycles can also be easily hidden behind another vehicle. When you must not overtake. You must not overtake another vehicle across an unbroken dividing line, single or double. When you do not have a clear view of approaching traffic, for example, before a crest or curve or if you have limited visibility. When a vehicle is stopping or has stopped at a pedestrian crossing, intersection or railway crossing and where a road narrows. Overtaking safely. The faster a vehicle is travelling, the more distance and time you need to overtake. Before overtaking another vehicle, check the road ahead is clear with enough distance for you to safely overtake. Check side streets and other lanes to make sure nothing will enter your overtaking space. Check mirrors and blind spots for motorcycles and other vehicles. Indicate to warn other drivers you intend to overtake. When overtaking, stay under the speed limit. Make sure there's room to move back into the lane. You should be able to see the vehicle in your rear vision mirror and indicate when you move back into your lane. When you're being overtaken, you must not increase your speed when the other vehicle is crossing a dividing line or the centre of the road to overtake you. When being overtaken, you should stay in your lane, keep left and allow room for the overtaking vehicle to pass and move back into the lane. Overtaking on the left. The only time you can overtake on the left is when the vehicle you're overtaking is waiting to turn right or make a U-turn from the centre of the road, stopped or travelling on a multi-lane road. To overtake a vehicle turning right or making a U-turn from the centre of the road, you can use the left lane, drive on, across or outside edge lines for up to 100 metres, drive in a bus lane, transit lane or truck lane for a maximum of 100 metres, or drive in a bicycle lane or tram lane for a maximum of 50 metres. Keep left unless overtaking. On a road where there's a keep left unless overtaking sign or a speed limit of 80 kilometres per hour or more, you must not drive in the right lane unless you're overtaking, turning right, making a U-turn, not turning left and there's a left lane must turn left sign or traffic lights with a left arrow signal, avoiding an obstruction, driving in traffic that's stopped or travelling slowly in the left lane, driving a bus or a truck and the right lane is for buses or trucks only, or overtaking a slow vehicle making a left turn. Overtaking long vehicles. You should take extreme care when overtaking long or oversized vehicles, such as a truck or bus or a vehicle towing a caravan or trailer. You should allow more time to pass and make sure you can see the road ahead. Some long vehicles have a do not overtake turning vehicle sign these vehicles may use more than one lane when turning right or left. In the diagram, do not overtake to the left of a long vehicle which is turning left. When a vehicle displays a do not overtake turning vehicle sign, you must not overtake on the left when the vehicle is turning left, overtake on the right when the vehicle is turning right unless it is safe to do so. 
When a vehicle displays a do not overtake turning vehicle sign, you must not overtake on the left unless it's safe to do so and you're driving on a multi-lane road, the vehicle is stationary, the vehicle is turning right or making a U-turn. Overtaking motorcycles. When overtaking a motorcycle, follow the same rules and give them as much space as a car. In the diagram, give motorcycles plenty of room when overtaking. Overtaking bicycles. When overtaking bicycles, you must allow a distance between you and the rider of at least one meter when the speed limit is 60 kilometers per hour or less, or 1.5 meters when the speed limit is more than 60 kilometers per hour. To overtake a bicycle, you should have a clear view of approaching traffic. Only overtake if it's safe to do so. If necessary, when overtaking a bicycle, you can drive to the right of the centre of the road, cross or straddle dividing lines, broken or unbroken, single or double, or drive on a flat painted island and median strips. Bicycles can overtake a vehicle on the left. Overtaking on bridges. When there is a no overtaking or passing sign on a bridge, you must give way to vehicles approaching in the opposite direction and you must not overtake any vehicle travelling in the same direction. Merging and changing lanes. Always check your mirrors and blind spots when changing or merging lanes. Especially look out for motorcycles and bicycles. You must indicate to let others know when you plan to move into another lane. Make sure your indicator is off after you've merged or changed lanes. Changing lanes. When changing lanes, you must give way to vehicles in the lane you're moving into. Changing lanes when a lane ends. When the lane you're driving in is ending and you need to cross a broken line to move into another lane, you must give way to vehicles already in that lane. For example, when you're joining a motorway. Slow down and look for a suitable gap so you can change lanes safely. If a vehicle is moving into your lane, you should leave a suitable gap. In the diagram, when a car is crossing a broken line to change into another lane, car A, it must give way to vehicles already in that lane, car B. When a bus changes lanes, you must give way to a bus displaying a give way to buses sign when you're driving in the left lane or line of traffic and the bus has stopped or is moving slowly at the far left side of the road, is indicating right and is about to move in front of you. Merging lanes. When you're driving on a road and the number of lanes or lines of traffic reduces and there are no longer any road markings, you must give way to the vehicle that's ahead of you. This is called a zipper merge. In the diagram, when two lanes reduce to one lane, the car trailing behind, car B, must give way to the car ahead, car A. Motorways and freeways. A motorway, also referred to as a freeway or expressway, is usually a high-speed road with more than one lane in each direction. Bicycles can travel on motorways unless a sign says they must not. Before driving on a freeway, make sure your vehicle has enough fuel, oil and water and the correct tyre pressure. Joining a motorway. Generally, when you join a motorway, the lane you're driving in ends and you need to cross a broken line to move into a lane on the motorway. You must give way to vehicles already in that lane. Slow down, check your mirrors and blind spots and look for a suitable gap so you can change lanes safely. Ramp metering signals. 
Some motorways have ramp metering signals to help you join the motorway. These are quick change traffic lights that manage the flow of vehicles entering the motorway. A sign at the start of the ramp shows if the signals are on. The green light signal only stays green long enough for the first vehicle in each lane to join the motorway. When the signal is red, you must stop behind the stop line. Driving on a motorway. When driving on a motorway with a speed limit of 80 km per hour or more and two or more lanes, you must not drive in the right lane unless overtaking, avoiding an obstruction, the traffic in each lane is congested, or a sign says you can. You must not make a U-turn or reverse your vehicle on a motorway. Always keep a safe stopping distance between you and the vehicle in front. Take extra care when vehicles are joining the motorway as this can change your crash avoidance space. Some motorways have overhead signals that show the speed limit or direct you to change lanes. These signals improve traffic flow, ease congestion, manage incident response and improve road safety. Speed limit signals. Some motorways have overhead electronic speed limit signals called variable speed limit signs that show the speed limit. You must not drive over the speed limit shown. Lane use signals. Some motorways have overhead lane use signals. You must follow these signals. A lane merge signal shows a white arrow pointing to the bottom left or right of the signal. This warns you that you're approaching a hazard. You must change lanes in the direction of the arrow. A closed lane signal shows a red cross. This signal is a warning that the lane is closed and you're approaching a hazard. You must not drive in this lane. A lane exit signal shows a white arrow pointing to the upper left or right of the signal. This warns you that the road ahead is closed and the next exit is a detour. You must change lanes in the direction of the arrow. Driver information signs. Some roads have large electronic information signs called variable message signs. These signs show information such as travel times and changes to road conditions. For example, ramp closures and road conditions. Stopping on a motorway. You must not stop or park on a motorway unless in an emergency. For example, to avoid a crash or if you've broken down. If you have to stop, move to the emergency stopping lane. Leaving a motorway. Signs show you when you can exit a motorway and when it's ending. When exiting a motorway, you should move to the lane closest to the exit in plenty of time, reduce your speed, and indicate before you exit. If you miss your exit, continue driving and take the next exit. Motorway signs show the alphanumeric number for significant national and interstate routes. M. Motorways of national significance, for example, M2. A. Routes of national significance. And B. Routes of state significance. Road tolls. You must pay a toll to drive on some motorways. If you do not pay, you get sent a toll notice. Signs warn you when there's a toll. Road lanes, lines and markings. Road lanes, lines and other markings guide traffic and help keep road users safe. You need to know what these lanes, lines and markings mean to drive safely. They help you understand where you can and cannot go on the road. For example, where to stop, keep left or turn right or which lane you should be in. 
Road lanes separate the traffic. You should keep in the middle of the lane when you're driving. When there are no lanes marked, or if you're approaching the top of a hill, keep to the left side of the road. Look out for lanes dedicated to bicycles, buses, trams and trucks. Road lines and markings. White dividing lines. White dividing lines separate vehicles travelling in opposite directions. Generally, you must always drive to the left of dividing lines, whether they're single or double, broken or unbroken. You can cross a white dividing line to avoid an obstruction if you have a clear view of approaching traffic, it's necessary and reasonable, and you can do so safely. Single dividing line. You can cross a single broken dividing line to overtake another vehicle, make a U-turn, enter or leave the road, or angle park on the opposite side of the road without making a U-turn. You can cross a single unbroken dividing line to enter or leave the road, or angle park on the opposite side of the road without making a U-turn. Double dividing line. You can cross double unbroken lines to enter or leave the road by the shortest route. You can cross double lines with a broken line close to you to overtake another vehicle, make a U-turn, enter or leave the road, or angle park on the opposite side of the road without making a U-turn. You can cross double lines with an unbroken line closer to you to enter or leave the road, or angle park on the opposite side of the road without making a U-turn. Some roads have wide centre lines that are up to 1.5 metres apart. They increase the distance between oncoming lanes of traffic to help prevent head-on crashes. The road rules for wide centre lines are the same as for other dividing lines. Edge lines. Edge lines mark the edge of the road to help you see where you're going. They also help to keep vehicles off soft road edges and out of breakdown lanes. Edge lines can be broken or unbroken. There are rules for overtaking and turning near edge lines. Rumble strips. Rumble strips are raised pieces of material on or near edge lines or dividing lines. When you drive over them, they make a rumbling sound and your vehicle vibrates to warn you that you're leaving your lane. When your wheels run over edge lines or rumble strips, slow down and ease back onto the road. Yellow curb lines. Yellow curb lines painted near the edge of the road show there are stopping restrictions. Broken curb line, clearway. A broken curb line marks a clearway. You must not stop in a clearway between the hours shown on the sign, except in an emergency. See restricted parking on page 160 for clearway parking rules. Unbroken curb line, no stopping. An unbroken curb line means you must not stop here, except in an emergency. Painted Islands A painted island is a striped section of road surrounded by double or single lines. You can drive on a painted island surrounded by single broken or unbroken lines for up to 50 metres to enter or leave the road, enter a turning lane that begins immediately after the painted island, or angle park on the opposite side of the road without making a U-turn. You must not drive on a painted island that separates two lines of traffic travelling in the same direction, is surrounded by double lines, or separates the road from a slip lane. When you enter a turning lane from a painted island, you must give way to any vehicle, already in the turning lane or entering the turning lane from another lane. Traffic Islands 
A traffic island is a raised area on a road to direct traffic. You must not drive on a traffic island unless it's designed for vehicles to drive on it. Median strips. A median strip is the area that separates vehicles travelling in opposite directions. It can be raised, painted or covered in grass and or trees. You must not stop or park on a median strip unless a sign says it's a median strip parking area. S lanes. An S lane creates a right turn lane by making the other lanes follow an S shape and merge with the curbside lane. A single unbroken white line separates the S shaped lanes. You must not cross this line when turning into an S lane. Painted arrows. Painted arrows show you which direction you can take in a lane. When the arrows show more than one direction, you can go in any of those directions. You must always indicate when you're turning, even when there's a painted arrow. As you turn from one road into the other, stay in the same lane. Keep clear. Keep clear markings are used to keep the road clear outside particular areas so vehicles can enter or exit. For example, at hospitals, fire stations and car parks. Keep clear markings are also used at intersections to stop vehicles blocking the intersection and make it easier for vehicles to exit or enter a side road. You must not stop in a keep clear area. Dragon's teeth. Dragon's teeth are painted triangles arranged in pairs on each side of a lane or road. They help to make school zones more visible and alert drivers to the 40 km per hour speed limit. Slip lanes. Slip lanes improve safety and traffic flow for vehicles turning left. Slip lanes are marked by a painted island or traffic island. You must use a slip lane to turn where one is provided. When you're turning left into a slip lane, with or without a give way sign, you must give way to vehicles on the road you're turning into, oncoming vehicles turning right into the road you're turning into, or any other vehicle or pedestrian in the slip lane. You must not stop in a slip lane unless a parking sign says you can. In the diagram, when a car is turning left into a slip lane, car A, they must give way to vehicles turning right into the road they're turning into. Median turning lanes. A median turning lane is a shared lane for vehicles driving in either direction to turn right into a side road or a driveway or property access. It's usually in the middle of the road and is marked by signs or arrows on the road. If there's an oncoming vehicle already in a median turning lane, you can enter the lane, but you must give way to the vehicle by slowing down and if necessary, stopping. In the diagram, you can enter and share a median turning lane with an oncoming vehicle. Bicycle lanes. Bicycle lanes are designed for bicycles. Signs and road markings show you where they are. When a bicycle lane is marked on the road, bicycle riders must use it unless it's not practical to do so. Bicycle lanes start with either a sign or a road marking with both a picture of a bicycle and the word lane. Bicycle road markings are displayed along the bike lane to remind drivers and bicycle riders. A bicycle lane ends with a sign or a road marking with a picture of a bicycle and the words lane end. A bicycle lane also ends at an intersection unless it's at the unbroken side of the continuing road or continued across the intersection by broken lines or at a dead end. You can drive in a bicycle lane to avoid an obstruction. You can also drive in a bicycle lane for up to 50 metres 
to enter or leave the road, overtake another vehicle turning right or making a U-turn, or enter a lane from the side of the road. If you need to drive in a bicycle lane, take extra care and check your surroundings for bicycles. Bicycle paths. Bicycle paths are different from bicycle lanes. It's optional for bicycle riders to use a bicycle path. Bicycle paths start with a bicycle path sign or a road marking. They run alongside a road or on off-road areas. Bicycle paths can also be used by people using skateboards, foot scooters and rollerblades. People who use wheelchairs or mobility scooters and postal workers on motorcycles. Other vehicles can only drive on a bicycle path if they're entering or leaving a road or if there's a sign saying they can. When driving on a bicycle path, you must give way to all other road users on the path. Bus lanes. Bus lanes are for buses but can also be used by taxis but not rideshare vehicles, hire cars with HC number plates, special purpose vehicles operated by or under the direction of Transport for New South Wales responding to an emergency, and bicycles and motorcycles. You must not stop in a bus lane. The only vehicles that can stop in a bus lane are buses at a bus stop or taxis and chauffeur-driven hire cars picking up or dropping off passengers. Other vehicles can drive in bus lanes to avoid an obstruction or if there's a sign saying they can. They can also drive in a bus lane for a maximum of 100 metres to enter or leave the road overtake another vehicle turning right or making a U-turn or enter a lane from the side of the road. Bus only lanes. When a sign or lane markings show bus only or buses only, only buses can drive in these lanes. T-way lanes. T-way lanes are special lanes for authorised buses and service vehicles. You must not drive in a T-way lane. Tramways and tram lanes. Tramways. Only trams, light rail vehicles, tram recovery vehicles, some buses and special purpose vehicles can drive in tramways. These lanes are marked with a tramway sign and two unbroken yellow lines along the tracks, or by a structure such as a traffic island, pedestrian refuge, or bollards. Other vehicles can drive in a tramway to avoid an obstruction, but only if they do not move into the path of an approaching tram or bus. Tram lanes. Only trams, Tram recovery vehicles and some buses can travel in lanes marked with a tram lane sign. Other vehicles can drive in tram lanes to avoid an obstruction or if there's a sign saying they can. They can also drive in a tram lane for a maximum of 50 metres to enter or leave the road, overtake another vehicle turning right or making a U-turn or enter a lane from the side of the road. You must not move into the path of a tram travelling in a tram lane. Truck lanes. Truck lanes are for vehicles over four and a half tonnes gross vehicle mass, but can also be used by bicycles, special purpose vehicles, and transport for New South Wales vehicles doing road and traffic surveys. Other vehicles can drive in a truck lane to avoid an obstruction or if there's a sign saying they can. They can also drive in a truck lane for a maximum of 100 metres to enter or leave the road, overtake another vehicle turning right or making a U-turn, or enter a lane from the side of the road. Truck use left lane. Where a sign says trucks must use left lane, Trucks must use the left lane until a sign says they must not. 
Trucks must also do this when a sign says buses or trucks and buses. All other vehicles can also use this lane. Transit lanes. Transit lanes can be used by vehicles containing a certain number of people. Public buses and minibuses, taxis, hire cars with HC number plates, motorcycles and bicycles, as well as emergency, special purpose and breakdown vehicles, can also use transit lanes regardless of the number of people in their vehicles. Transit lane T2. You can only drive in this lane during the times and days specified on the sign when there are two or more people in your vehicle, including the driver. Transit lane T3. You can only drive in this lane during the times and days specified on the sign when there are three or more people in your vehicle, including the driver. If you have less than the required number of people in your vehicle, you can only enter a transit lane for a maximum of 100 metres to enter or leave the road, overtake another vehicle turning right or making a U-turn, or enter a lane from the side of the road. Any vehicle can drive in a transit lane to avoid an obstruction or if a sign says you can. Shared paths. Shared paths can only be used by bicycle riders and pedestrians. On shared paths, bicycle riders must keep to the left unless it's not practical, give way to pedestrians, this means slowing down and even coming to a stop if necessary, keep to the left of any oncoming bicycle rider, Riders of skateboards, foot scooters and rollerblades must keep to the left unless it's not practical and give way to all other pedestrians. Keep left or right. When you see a keep left sign, you must stay to the left of the sign. Keep right and keep left signs are regulatory signs and must be obeyed by law. When you see a keep right sign, you must stay to the right of the sign. Parking. Parking rules help you park where it's safe and convenient for others. There are different ways to park, as well as safe places to stop or park. There are times and places where you can stop for a short period, but you must not park. Read parking signs carefully to check restrictions. You can get a fine and in some situations demerit points for parking illegally. You must never leave children or animals alone in a vehicle. They're in danger of dehydration and burns in a hot vehicle, playing with controls such as the handbrake, gears and power windows, and being harmed if the vehicle is stolen. No parking. You must not stop or park your vehicle alongside another parked vehicle, double park, across a driveway unless you're picking up or dropping off passengers, on a median strip unless a sign says you can, on a traffic island, within an intersection, on a children's crossing or pedestrian crossing, on a railway level crossing, on footpaths and nature strips unless a sign says you can, in a slip lane unless a sign says you can. Your parked vehicle must not block the flow of traffic or become a danger to other road users. In some places, you must not park at certain times or under certain conditions. No parking signs. You must not park on a road or in an area where there's a no parking sign. This may be all the time or at certain times as shown on the sign. You can stop for less than two minutes if you stay within three metres of your vehicle, if you're dropping off or picking up passengers or loading or unloading items. If you have a mobility parking scheme permit, you can stop for up to five minutes. Parked vehicles. You must not park within one metre of another vehicle parked in front or behind but not when angle parking. Bus stops. You must not park within 20 metres before and 10 metres after a bus stop unless a sign says you can. 
Intersections. You must not park within 20 metres of an intersection with traffic lights unless a sign says you can. You must not park within 10 metres of an intersection without traffic lights unless a sign says you can or if it's a T intersection and you park along the continuous side of the continuing road. Crossings. You must not stop or park within 20 metres before and 10 metres after a children's crossing or pedestrian crossing unless a sign says you can. You must not stop or park within 10 metres before and 3 metres after traffic lights that aren't at an intersection but have pedestrian signals unless a sign says you can or bicycle crossing lights unless a sign says you can. You must not stop or park within 20 metres before and after a railway level crossing unless a sign says you can. Double dividing lines. You must not park within 3 metres of any double dividing lines. Fire hydrants. You must not park within 1 metre of a fire hydrant, fire hydrant indicator or fire plug indicator. On or near a crest or curve. You must not stop or park on a hill or a curve outside of a built up area unless drivers are able to see your vehicle from at least 100 metres away. If there's a parking sign, follow the instructions shown. Restricted parking. You can stop or park in some places that have restricted times or conditions. Restrictions may be on a sign or marked on the road. Check carefully to avoid a parking fine or have your vehicle towed. No stopping. The no stopping sign means you must not stop at any point on the road or curb in the direction of the arrow, unless in an emergency. No stopping areas are sometimes marked by an unbroken yellow edge line. Restrictions may apply at certain times only, as shown on the sign. Clearway and special event clearway. A broken yellow line can also be used to show a clearway. Clearways improve traffic flow and safety during busy periods or at special events. You must not stop or part between these signs during these times unless in emergency. Buses and taxis, but not rideshare vehicles, can stop in a clear way to pick up or drop off passengers. Restricted parking areas. Restricted parking areas are used in large public areas that have limited entry and exit points, such as Darling Harbour and Homebush Bay. You must not stop or park between the restricted parking area and end restricted parking area signs, except where a sign says you can. You can stop to pick up or drop off goods or passengers. Hourly parking. You can park on the days of the week and during the hours shown on the sign. Accessible parking. You can park in an area reserved for people with a disability if you have a current mobility parking scheme permit or if you're driving a person with the permit. The permit must be displayed in the vehicle. Mobility parking scheme permit holders can also park for longer in areas with time restrictions. See special parking conditions at road-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Resident parking. You can park without charge or time restrictions if you have a valid parking permit for that area. You must display your parking permit at all times. Special event parking. Special event parking areas are used near major sporting or entertainment venues. You must not park for longer than the period on the signs unless you have a parking permit. Motorcycle parking. You must not park between these signs unless you're a motorcycle rider. 
you can stop to drop off or pick up passengers. Pay parking. You must pay for parking if a sign reads meter, ticket, phone or coupon parking. You can park for the length of time shown on the sign. For example, a 2p meter sign means you can park for up to two hours and you must pay using the meter. Australia Post Box You must not park within three metres of an Australia Post letterbox. You can stop to post mail or drop off or pick up passengers. Taxi Zone You must not stop in the direction of the arrow or arrows on the sign unless driving a taxi. Some taxi zones have times shown. You can stop or park your vehicle outside those times. Bus zone. You must not stop in the direction of an arrow or arrows on the sign unless you're driving a public bus. Some bus zones have times shown. You can stop or park your vehicle outside those times. Loading zone. Vehicles primarily designed to carry goods can stop in a loading zone to drop off or pick up goods. Goods do not include personal items or shopping. Time limits are 15 minutes for station wagons and motorcycles with three wheels, 30 minutes for trucks and other vehicles primarily designed to carry goods. Public buses can stop for up to 30 minutes to pick up or drop off passengers. Any vehicle can stop briefly to pick up or drop off passengers. Restrictions may apply for certain times only as shown on the sign. Works zone. You must not park in a works zone unless your vehicle has been used in construction work in or near the zone. Any vehicle can stop to pick up or drop off passengers. Restrictions may apply at certain times, only as shown on the sign. Truck Zone You must not stop or park during the hours shown on the sign unless dropping off or picking up goods in a truck over 4.5 tonnes gross vehicle mass. Any vehicle can stop to pick up or drop off passengers. Restrictions may apply for certain times as shown on the sign. Ways to park. There are two main ways to park, parallel and angle. Once you've parked, follow the parking checks to stay safe. Parallel parking. This is the usual way to park unless a sign says otherwise. You must park in the same direction as traffic, parallel and as close as possible to the curb. Within any line markings, at least one metre in front of and back from any other parked vehicle. On a one-way street, you can also park on the right side of the road. Angle parking. You can angle park where signs or line markings show you can. Unless a sign or road marking says otherwise, you must park at a 45 degree angle and with the front of the vehicle to the curb. Parking checks. Before leaving your vehicle, make sure the parking brake is on. If you move more than three metres away from your vehicle, you must also remove the key from the ignition, lock all doors and windows if no one's in the vehicle. Before opening your door, you must check your mirror and blind spots for pedestrian bicycles and other vehicles. Before pulling out from the side of the road or parking area, you must indicate for at least five seconds, check mirrors, and look over your shoulder to check blind spots. Warnings and road hazards. While driving, look out for potential hazards. A hazard is any possible danger that might lead to a crash. It could be a pedestrian waiting to cross 
a wet road or something blocking your view of oncoming vehicles. Also look out for approaching vehicles and parked vehicles pulling out. If you cannot see at least five seconds ahead, you should slow down. When you see a potential hazard, slow down and prepare to stop. Scanning helps you see what's happening on the road and any potential hazards. Look out for warning signs alerting you to dangers or changed road conditions ahead. Warning signs. Warning signs alert you that there may be dangers or changed road conditions ahead. The signs are usually diamond shaped with pictures, diagrams, symbols or words in black on a yellow background. These are some of the most common warning signs. Crossroads ahead. You're approaching a T intersection where the road you're driving on ends. You must give way to all vehicles. Road conditions are changing to two lanes of oncoming traffic. Side road ahead. A side road meets the road you're driving on. Road ahead curves to the right. Sharp right turn ahead. Sharp bend to the left ahead. Winding road ahead. Road divides ahead. Divided road ends ahead. Road narrow ahead. Give way sign ahead. Stop sign ahead. Pedestrian crossing ahead. Pedestrians may be crossing ahead. Children may be crossing ahead. Look out for bicycles. Road is slippery when wet. Steep descent, downgrade ahead. Beware of slow moving vehicles crossing or entering traffic. Temporary emergency situation ahead, such as an oil spill, fallen tree, snow or landslide. Narrow bridge. You're approaching a narrow bridge. Slow down and prepare to stop. The road dips ahead. A sudden slope down then up. Hump ahead. A sudden slope up then down. Look out for kangaroos. As you approach the top of the hill ahead, you cannot see a safe distance in front of you. Drive carefully. Livestock may be crossing ahead. Road ahead is under water, for example, a stream. Grid ahead, a row of metal bars across the road. Causeway ahead may be covered in water. A causeway is a raised road across a low or wet area or a body of water. Road ahead may be covered by flood water. A measure showing the depth of flood water across the road. Sometimes an advisory speed sign is used with a warning sign. For example, to show the maximum speed that's safe in good conditions or how long you should look out for a particular hazard. For example, road ahead curves to the right. 55 kilometers per hour maximum speed in good conditions. Some roads have large electronic signs called variable message signs. These signs warn you of changes in traffic conditions ahead. For example, fog, a crash, roadworks, congestion, road closures, or police operations. Roadworks. Temporary signs warn you that roadworks are ahead. When approaching roadworks, slow down, look out for any hazards and be prepared to stop. You must obey the regulatory signs and traffic lights at roadworks. Look out for road workers on the road and obey signals from traffic controllers.
Stop and slow signs are used at roadworks to control traffic. You must stop before reaching a handheld stop sign. Speed signs are regulatory signs. You must not drive faster than the speed limit shown on the sign. Here are some examples. 40 km per hour speed limit for roadworks. This speed limit must be obeyed. Slow down and be prepared to stop. Traffic controller ahead. Be prepared to stop. Road workers ahead. Slow down. Approaching roadworks. Slow down and be prepared to stop. Roadworks have ended. No lines marked on the road. Take care if overtaking. Closed lane ahead. Merge to the right. Watch for loose stones. Slow down. Wildlife and livestock. On country roads, look out for unfenced livestock and wildlife. Animals on the road can be dangerous and can cause serious crashes. They can move quickly and can be unpredictable. When you see a stock warning sign, you may be approaching farm animals on or near the road. Slow down when you see animal warning signs. Animals are more active near waterholes and creeks and are harder to see at sunrise and sunset. If you see an animal on the road, slow down and apply your brakes in a controlled way. Never swerve to avoid an animal. This may cause you to lose control of your vehicle or to collide with oncoming traffic. If you collide with an animal, only stop if it's safe to do so. If the animal is injured, for a native or wild animal, call the Wildlife and Information Rescue Services, WIRES, at wires.org.au. For a domestic pet, contact the owner, police or RSPCA at rspca.org.au. Crashes. If you're involved in a crash, you must always stop and give as much help as possible. You must provide your details to the other people involved or to police. If you're involved in a crash that causes death or injury and you do not stop and help, you can get a fine and be sent to prison. Driving safely reduces your chances of being involved in a crash. What to do after a crash? If you have a crash, turn off your ignition to reduce the risk of fire. Turn on your hazard lights. If safe to do so, check whether there is anything on the road from the crash that could be dangerous or cause another crash, such as debris or broken glass. Move it off the road if it's safe to do so. If you're involved in a crash with a truck carrying a dangerous load, call the police or fire brigade on triple zero. Warn people away from the crash. Avoid touching spilled chemicals or breathing the fumes or dust. Look for an emergency procedures guide attached to the truck's driver's door. Follow these procedures if it's safe to do so. Exchanging details. If you're involved in a crash, you must give the other person or people involved your name and address, your vehicle registration number and the name and address of the owner of the vehicle if you're not the owner. When to call an ambulance and police. If anyone is injured or killed in a crash, call an ambulance and then call police on triple zero. The police attend and investigate crashes when a person is trapped, killed or injured, any driver is believed to be under the influence of alcohol or drugs. A person fails to stop or exchange information. They need to direct traffic or deal with hazards. Or a bus or truck needs to be towed away. You must always give police at a crash scene your driver license, 
details of the crash and vehicles involved, your name and address, and information about any witnesses or other drivers involved. When not to call the police. You do not need to call the police to attend a crash when there are no injuries and vehicles do not need to be towed. If someone involved in the crash is later treated for an injury, call the police assistance line on 131 444. If police do not attend the crash scene, you must report the crash as soon as possible within 24 hours. If a vehicle is towed away, property is damaged or animals are injured, or you're unable to provide your details to the other driver. Report the crash to the nearest police station or the police assistance line on 131 444. First aid after a crash. First aid is a skill that everyone should learn. For details on first aid courses, contact St John Ambulance Association at stjohnnsw.com.au Australian Red Cross at redcross.org.au or National Safety Council of Australia at training.nsca.org.au Calling a tow truck If your vehicle needs to be towed after a crash, you have the right to decide who will tow your vehicle and where your vehicle will be towed to. To be authorised, New South Wales tow trucks attending an accident scene must have a number plate with four numbers and ending in TT and also be driven by a driver with a valid driver certificate. Do not use a tow truck that does not meet these requirements. It's your responsibility to check the tow truck is authorised. Before a tow truck tows your vehicle, you as the owner and or driver must sign a towing authorisation form. This gives the tow truck driver permission to tow your vehicle. You have the right to contact someone before you sign the towing authorisation form for assistance, for example, a mechanic, so you know where to tow your vehicle, and get a copy of the towing authorisation form. If you're unable to organise a tow truck or sign the form, a police officer or authorised officer can organise a tow truck for you. If you have comprehensive car insurance, the towing fee may be covered. Check with your insurer. Breakdowns To reduce the risk of a breakdown, plan ahead. Check your fuel, oil, water and tyre pressure, including the spare, regularly. Carry a high visibility vest and a torch inside your vehicle. When you break down, find a safe spot to pull over, such as the side of the road, shoulder, an emergency stopping lane or a breakdown lane. Park your vehicle as far to the left and away from other traffic as possible. Turn on your hazard lights and parking lights if there's poor visibility. Stay in your vehicle with your seatbelt on and call roadside assistance. If you have a flat tyre, drive to a safe spot away from the traffic if possible. If you have to get out of your vehicle, check for traffic before getting out. Get out on the safest side of the road away from the traffic. Stand clear of the road and move behind a safety barrier if it's safe to do so. Avoid crossing the road and do not change a tyre unless it's safe to do so. If you break down in a tunnel, pull over to the breakdown bay or the side of the lane. Turn on your hazard lights, stay in your vehicle and wait for help to arrive. Major tunnels are constantly monitored. When you see a breakdown, take extra care when you see a vehicle that has broken down. Slow down and keep a safe distance. When passing a stop tow truck or breakdown assistance vehicle with flashing lights, if the speed is 80 kilometres or less, you must slow down to 40 kilometres per hour. If the speed limit is over 80 kilometres per hour, 
you must slow down safely and move over. This includes changing lanes on a multi-lane road if it's safe to do so. You must not increase your speed until you've passed all vehicles and people involved. If you stop to help, find a safe spot to pull over and check for traffic before getting out. Some heavy vehicles use warning triangles when they break down. If you see these on the road, slow down. Police and emergency vehicles. Look out for emergency vehicles on the road such as police cars, fire trucks and ambulances. You can get a fine and demerit points for not giving way to an emergency vehicle. You must obey directions given by police on the road, including police signs and hand signals. If the police direct you to pull over, you must stop in a safe place as soon as you can. Passing a stopped emergency vehicle. When passing a stopped emergency vehicle with flashing blue or red lights, if the speed limit is 80 km per hour or less, you must slow down to 40 km per hour. If the speed limit is over 80 km per hour, you must slow down safely and move over. This includes changing lanes on a multi-lane road if it's safe to do so. You must not increase your speed until you've passed all vehicles and people involved. Giving way to an approaching emergency vehicle. When you hear a siren or see the flashing blue or red lights of an emergency vehicle, you must give way so it can pass. You may need to move to the left, stop or pull over out of the line of traffic. Funeral processions. When you see a funeral or an official procession, you must not interrupt it. You can get a fine if you interfere with the procession. Slow down and stay behind it. Driving in poor conditions. You should avoid driving during unpredictable and severe weather events and conditions. Before you drive, check for storms, bushfires, hail, snow, dust storms and heavy fog. If you're driving and conditions get worse, pull over to a safe place. Wait until the conditions improve. When you cannot avoid driving in poor conditions, slow down, drive carefully and increase your visibility by using your day running lights or headlights. Stay informed about weather by listening to the radio. You may need to change your route to avoid driving into danger. Stay alert by taking regular rest breaks. Driving in wet weather. When driving in wet weather, the road can become slippery and your vehicle takes longer to stop. If it starts to rain, you should turn on your day running lights or headlights if your vehicle is not fitted with these, brake gently to slow down and increase the gap between you and the vehicle in front. This is your crash avoidance space. Driving on unsealed roads. Take extra care and slow down when driving on unsealed roads, dirt or gravel. Your vehicle takes longer to stop and is harder to control. If you drive too fast, your vehicle may skid, slide or roll over. Driving through water. You should avoid driving through water. This can be very risky. There's a limit to the depth of water that your vehicle can drive through safely. It's difficult to assess how deep and fast water is when it's moving over a road. The road surface under the water may be damaged or there may be debris or the water level may be rising. Flood water is extremely dangerous. Find another way or wait until the road is clear. It's safer to turn around than to drive in flood water. Driving distractions. Distractions take your attention away from driving. They can significantly increase your risk of crashing. A distraction is anything that takes your eyes off the road, your hands off the wheel 
or your mind off driving. Distractions can come from both inside and outside your vehicle. Taking your eyes off the road for two seconds doubles the risk of a crash or near crash. For example, when driving at 50 kilometers per hour, if you take your eyes off the road for two seconds, you'll travel 28 meters. When you're distracted or your attention is divided, you're more likely to make mistakes. A short lapse in concentration can have lifelong consequences. Passengers. Passengers can be helpful when you're driving by identifying hazards and risky situations. They can also help with other activities such as changing music and navigating. However, the noise and behaviour of passengers can distract you while driving. Some passengers may encourage you to take risks, such as speeding or breaking the road rules. Young drivers have a high risk of crashing when driving with passengers of a similar age. See licence restrictions on page 19 for provisional P1 drivers under 25. Animals in your vehicle. Animals in your vehicle can be distracting when you're driving. They should travel in an appropriate area of your vehicle. You must not drive with an animal in your lap. While an animal is being led from the vehicle, including being led by you or a passenger, or while an animal is tied to the outside of the vehicle. Reducing distractions. Avoiding or reducing distractions when you drive can reduce your risk of crashing. To reduce distraction, turn off the radio music, particularly in new or challenging traffic situations. Put loose items in a bag or a box or in the boot. Ask your passengers not to distract you. Do not adjust the radio music when driving. Limit the number of passengers and animals you carry. If you have a learner or provisional P1 or P2 license, put your mobile phone on silent or out of reach or switch it off. If you have a full unrestricted license, avoid using your mobile phone. See mobile phones on page 54 for rules for using your phone legally while driving. Lights and horns. Lights. About a third of car crashes occur at night. Pedestrians, bicycles and motorcycles are harder to see at night than during the day. At night or when there's not enough daylight to see a person wearing dark clothing at a distance of 100 metres, your vehicle must have clearly visible headlights, tail lights, number plates and clearance lights and side marker lights if fitted to your vehicle. Headlights. Using your vehicle's day running lights improves the likelihood of other road users seeing you. If your vehicle is not fitted with day running lights, you can use your headlights on low beam. Your headlights must be on when driving between sunset and sunrise, and also at any other time when there's not enough daylight to see a person wearing dark clothing at a distance of 100 metres. High beam lights. You can use your headlights on high beam if you need to see further ahead, even if there are street lights. You must turn your headlights from high beam to low beam when a vehicle coming towards you is within 200 metres and when you are driving 200 metres or less behind another vehicle. You can also flash your high beam lights before you overtake another vehicle. Fog lights. You must only use your fog lights in fog or rain or when other conditions limit your vision, such as smoke or dust. Once conditions improve and you can see more clearly, you must switch the fog lights off. If your vehicle does not have fog lights, you can use your low beam headlights and hazard lights in fog or rain. Hazard lights. Hazard lights or hazard warning lights are flashing orange or red lights on a vehicle. 
You must only use your hazard lights when your vehicle is stopped in a hazardous position, for example, when obstructing other vehicles or pedestrians, or when you're driving in hazardous conditions such as fog or rain. Avoid lights that dazzle. Do not use or fit lights to your vehicle that could dazzle or distract other road users. Avoid looking straight at the headlights of oncoming vehicles. If you're dazzled or your vision is blurred by the glare of high beam lights, look to the left side of the road and drive to the left of your lane. Slow down or stop out of the line of traffic until your eyes recover. Horns and other warning devices. You must not use your horn or any other warning device unless you need to warn other road users about the position of your vehicle. You need to warn others that you're approaching. You need to warn animals to get off the road or it's part of an anti-theft or alcohol interlock device. Never use your horn to scare or intimidate other road users particularly bicycle riders, pedestrians and horse riders. Vehicle safety and compliance. The age and condition of your vehicle contribute to road safety. There are checks and rules in place to keep every vehicle on the road as safe as possible. Your vehicle must be safe to drive and registered. Keep your vehicle well maintained by regularly checking everything is working correctly. Adjust your seat and controls so you're comfortable and can drive with confidence. Think about the environment when driving. Do not throw rubbish or lit cigarettes from your vehicle. When towing, make sure your load is secure. Vehicle registration. All vehicles must be registered to drive in New South Wales. All vehicles, except trailers and caravans, must have CTP insurance, a green slip, to be registered. See compulsory third party insurance at road-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au. Driving a vehicle that's not registered and not insured is illegal. You can get a fine and demerit points. See penalties for unregistered vehicle offences at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au If you're driving a vehicle that's not registered and you have a crash, you're not covered by CTP insurance and there are severe penalties. There are penalties for parking a vehicle that's not registered on a road. You can only drive a vehicle that's not registered if you're getting or renewing your registration or if you have an unregistered vehicle permit. See unregistered vehicles at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Getting a new registration What you must do to register your vehicle in New South Wales depends on its age and whether it's currently registered. See Get a Vehicle Registration at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Transferring Registration When you buy a vehicle that's currently registered, you must transfer the registration into your name within 14 days to avoid a late surcharge. See Transfer Your Registration at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Renewing Registration You must renew your registration on or before the due date. It is important to renew on time to avoid driving a vehicle that's not registered and getting a fine and demerit points. See Renew Your Registration at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au If you do not renew your registration within three months of the due date, it's automatically cancelled. To drive your vehicle again, you must get a new registration. Generally, vehicles older than five years must have a safety check to renew the registration. See safety checks and inspections at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au If your vehicle fails the safety check, you must not drive it unless you're getting it repaired or inspected. 
you must not drive it again until it passes the inspection and is registered. Number plates. Your vehicle must have number plates permanently attached to the front and back. Motorcycles only need a number plate on the back. The plates must be issued by Transport for New South Wales. The numbers must match the numbers on the vehicle's certificate of registration. You must not attach your number plates to another vehicle. You must not change or deface the number plates in any way. You must not obscure them, for example, with L plates or P plates. Number plate covers must be clean, clear, untinted, non-reflective and flat. The number plates must be clean and not damaged. The numbers must be readable from a distance at least 20 metres. From above and from the side with a 45 degree arc from the centre of the vehicle. All rear number plates must have a light so they can be seen at night. If you're towing a trailer, the trailer must also have a number plate on the back. If your vehicle has a bicycle rack or tow bar, the rear number plate must be clearly visible. See the vehicle standards information on carrying bicycles on motor vehicles at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au. You can buy a smaller copy of your number plate with the same letters and numbers from a service centre. See Order Auxiliary Plates at service.nsw.gov.au. There are penalties for hiding any part of a number plate. Roadworthiness. To be registered, your vehicle must be suitable for safe use, roadworthy, and meet the standards required by law. Defect notices. Police can stop your vehicle and inspect it at any time. If your vehicle is not safe to drive, they can give you a defect notice. For example, you can get a defect notice if your vehicle is too noisy, drips oil or blows too much smoke, has a bull bar that's not safe or does not meet standards, for example, if it has pointed corners or sharp edges, has an accessory that is not fitted correctly, for example, a fishing rod holder, spotlight mount or winch. See protrusions on vehicles at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au. If you get a defect notice, you must repair your vehicle by the due date on the notice. Some repairs must be cleared by an authorised person, such as a vehicle inspector. Find an authorised inspection station at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au. Your registration can be suspended if you do not repair the defect by the due date. Modifications A vehicle with a significant modification must be assessed and certified before it can be registered. This must be done by a licensed certifier under the Vehicle Safety Compliance Certification Scheme. They'll make sure the modification and vehicle meets the standards and do not cause a safety risk. Modifications may also affect your vehicle insurance and warranty cover. Some modifications can make your vehicle less stable and affect its performance. See Modified and Non-Standard Vehicles at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Provisional P1 and P2 drivers must not drive vehicles with modifications that increase engine performance. See Licence Restrictions on page 19. Checking your vehicle. Regularly checking that your windscreen wipers, washers, horn and seat belts are working. Check your lights are working including headlights, brake lights and indicators. You must not drive at night if your lights are not working. Your tyres, including the spare, must be in good condition. They must not be smooth and must have a tread of at least 1.5 millimetres deep. They must be inflated to the recommended pressure and must not have any cracks or bumps or be worn unevenly. Vehicle safety features. Vehicle safety features can significantly improve safety and are becoming more widely available. 
technologies like autonomous emergency braking and lane support systems can reduce the risk of a crash. Side curtain airbags can reduce the severity of an injury if a crash cannot be avoided. Whether you're looking for a new or used car, consider safety features and look for cars that are rated highly by the Australasian New Car Assessment Program or by the Used Car Safety Ratings Buyer's Guide. See safety ratings at roadsafety.transport.nsw.gov.au Airbags Airbags are a supplementary restraining system. They are designed to work together with seatbelts. For the driver's airbag to work best, adjust your seating wheel low facing your chest. It's important that your airbags work and comply with the regulations. A faulty airbag is a defect, which means your vehicle is not safe to drive. Electronic driver assist systems. Electronic driver assist systems are standard on most vehicles. While these systems improve safety, they do not prevent you from losing control or crashing if you drive dangerously. Electronic stability control. Electronic stability control systems help you keep your intended direction by detecting if your vehicle is not responding correctly to your steering. The system selectively applies the brakes to the individual wheels or changes engine power. Anti-lock braking system. Anti-lock braking system is an electronic stability control that controls braking force to prevent your tyres from skidding. For example, when you brake heavily or in slippery conditions. An anti-lock braking system may cause the brake pedal to pulse or shudder when in use. Traction control systems. Traction control systems is an electronic stability control system that stops your wheels spinning by reducing engine power or temporarily applying the brakes. Traction control systems let the vehicle speed up smoothly, even on slippery surfaces. Emergency brake assist. Emergency brake assist detects sudden braking. It automatically increases the force being applied to the brakes to minimize your stopping distance. It is also known as a brake assist system. Autonomous emergency braking. Autonomous emergency braking warns you of close objects in your vehicle's path. It automatically reduces the speed of your vehicle if you do not respond to the warning. Lane support systems. A lane support system recognises lane markings. The system either alerts you when you're too close to a lane boundary or takes over the steering to guide your vehicle away from that boundary. Reverse collision avoidance. Reverse collision avoidance uses cameras to improve your view when reversing. If sensors are fitted, it alerts you when a personal object crosses your path as you reverse. Blind spot monitoring. Blind spot monitoring alerts you to other vehicles in your blind spots when you change lanes. Towing. Be careful when towing a trailer or caravan. You need more knowledge and skill than for normal driving. When towing, you must not tow more than one trailer at a time. You must not have any person travelling in a trailer or caravan you're towing. You must also secure your load and make sure it does not overhang. Learner and provisional P1 drivers have restrictions on what they can tow. See licence restrictions on page 19. You can get a fine and demerit points for towing illegally. Driving posture. Good driving posture reduces fatigue and improves comfort, control and safety. It's important to adjust the driver's seat and controls to suit your height and build. For good driving posture, adjust your seat so you have a clear view of the road and can easily reach the controls. Adjust the steering wheel low, facing your chest. 
Adjust the head restraint for your height. Adjust your seat belt below your hips and with no twists. Adjust the mirrors so you have a good view of the rear and the side of the vehicle. Have the seat upright to support your back and shoulders. Keep your arms bent. Thumbs should be on the rim of the steering wheel. Keep your knees slightly bent. Sit back in your seat and brace your body using your left foot. Your vehicle and the environment. Littering. You must not throw any rubbish out of the vehicle. You're responsible for anything that's thrown or dropped and anything that falls from your vehicle or from a trailer you're towing. If someone reports you, you can get a heavy fine. If it's possible that the item could injure a person or obstruct or damage a vehicle or the road surface, you must remove it from the road as soon as it's safe to do so. If you do not, you can get a fine and demerit points. Cigarette butts. You must not throw cigarette butts out of your vehicle. Lit cigarettes are especially dangerous. You can get demerit points and a heavy fine if you throw a lit cigarette from a vehicle. Fuel consumption and emissions. Things you can do to reduce fuel consumption and greenhouse gas emissions, eco driving, include do not overfill your petrol tank. Leave room for the fuel to expand and reduce emissions. Only use air conditioning when necessary. It's most efficient when you're driving above 60 kilometers per hour. Check the tire pressures regularly. Underinflated tires increase rolling resistance and fuel consumption. Turn the engine off when you stop for long periods. Avoid carrying unnecessary weight. Remove things like roof racks, bike racks and golf clubs when you're not using them. Service your vehicle regularly and use the correct amount of engine oil and coolant. When driving a manual car, change gears at a lower engine speed. Avoid over revving when you take off and maintain a steady speed. Penalties Road laws and road rules help keep our roads safe for everyone. If you break them, you put yourself and other road users at risk. That's why penalties apply to encourage drivers to follow the rules and keep driving safely. Penalties range from fines and demerit points to losing your license and going to prison. The penalty reflects the safety risk of the offence. For example, Offences that can cause serious injury or death, such as speeding or drink driving, have more severe penalties. Fines. There are fines for every type of driving offence, for example parking illegally, speeding, not wearing a seatbelt, driving a vehicle that's not registered, or not complying with your licence restrictions. You can get a penalty notice on the spot or in the post and if you have to pay a fine. The fine amount depends on the offence. If it's a serious offence, you may have to go to court. See pay your fine at revenue.newsouthwales.gov.au Unpaid fines If you do not pay a fine by the due date, your driver licence can be suspended and or your vehicle registration can be cancelled. If you cannot pay the full amount, you may be able to set up a payment plan at revenue.nsw.gov.au. Once you've paid, the suspension ends and you get your licence back. If you do not pay or set up a payment plan within six months of your suspension, your licence can be cancelled and you will have to reapply to have your licence reissued. You can only do this when you've paid all outstanding fines. Any demerit points are carried over when your suspension ends or if you get a new licence. See fines and fees at revenue.nsw.gov.au Demerit points Demerit points are penalty points that you get if you commit certain driving offences. All drivers start with zero demerit points. If you drive safely and do not break any rules, 
you continue to have zero demerit points. Each time you commit an offence that carries demerit points, the points are added to your driving record. Your licence is suspended when you reach a certain point limit. The limit depends on your driver licence type. Suspension for exceeding your demerit point limits apply in addition to any other suspensions you get for committing an offence. Some driving offences attract double demerit points during holiday periods. These offences include driving over the speed limit, not wearing a seatbelt for you or your passengers, and not using an approved and suitable child car seat, using a mobile phone illegally. See demerit points at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Loss of licence there are two main ways you can lose your driver licence, suspension and disqualification. Driving when you've lost your licence is a serious offence. Suspension. When your licence is suspended, you must not drive at all for a period of time. Your licence can be suspended for offences such as going over the demerit point limit within a three-year period, driving more than 30 kilometres per hour over the speed limit, driving over the alcohol limit under 0.08 as a first offence, not paying a fine and being medically unfit to drive. For some offences, police can suspend and take away your licence immediately. These include driving without a supervisor when a learner driver, Driving more than 30 kilometres over the speed limit, learner and provisional P1 and P2 licence holders. Driving more than 45 kilometres over the speed limit for all licence holders. Driving over the alcohol limit, hooning or street racing. When your suspension ends, you can drive again. If your licence was taken away by police, you have to apply for a replacement at a service centre before you can drive. If you go to court, your suspension might end and be replaced by a disqualification. See Licence Suspension and Cancellation at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Disqualification If a court convicts you of an offence and disqualifies you from driving, your licence is cancelled. This means you must not drive at all. The court will decide how long you'll be disqualified. Offences often have minimum and maximum disqualification periods. Once the disqualification ends, you can apply to have your licence reissued at a service centre. Depending on the length of the disqualification, you may have to resit the driver knowledge test and or the driving test. All drivers, including learners, P1s and P2 drivers can have their licence disqualified. You will be disqualified if you're convicted of driving with a suspended licence, driving over the alcohol limit, driving under the influence of alcohol, driving with illegal drugs in your system, driving under the influence of drugs or medicines, and driving more than 30 km per hour over the speed limit. Negligent or dangerous driving causing injury or death hooning or street racing, not stopping after a crash in which someone was injured or killed. See Licence Disqualification at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Alcohol interlocks. If you're convicted of a drink driving offence, you may have to have an alcohol interlock fitted to your vehicle. This is an electronic breath testing device linked to your vehicle's ignition. It prevents the vehicle from starting if it detects alcohol on your breath. Drink driving offences that can result in an alcohol interlock include driving with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08 or over, any repeat drink driving offence, driving under the influence of alcohol, refusing blood or urine tests. Driver education courses you can be required to complete a driver education course such as the Traffic Offender Intervention Program if you exceed the demerit point limit for your licence twice within five years. The course aims to ensure that drivers understand the road rules 
and the risks of unsafe driving and change their behaviour. The Sober Driver Program is a program that aims to change the attitudes and behaviours of drink driver offenders. You may be required to complete the Sober Driver Program if a court convicts you of driving over the alcohol limit but it does not require you to get an alcohol interlock. Vehicle Impoundment Police can impound or take away your vehicle or remove the number plates if you commit a high-risk offence such as driving more than 45 kilometres per hour over the speed limit, driving with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08 or over as a repeat offence, hooning or street racing, driving when you do not have a licence, two or more offences, driving while your licence is disqualified, two or more offences, and driving to get away from police. Combined with the loss of licence, taking away your vehicle or number plates aim to keep the high-risk drivers off the road. Prison. You can be sent to prison if a court finds you guilty of a high-risk driving offence, such as driving with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08 or over, driving under the influence of alcohol, driving under the influence of drugs or medicines, refusing blood or urine tests, negligent or dangerous driving causing injury or death, driving while your licence is suspended or disqualified, hooning or straight racing. The prison term can increase for repeat offences. See alcohol and drug offences and other serious driving offences at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au Toll Notices If you use a road with a toll and you do not have an electronic tag or pass, you must pay a fee. If you do not pay within three days, you get a toll notice. You must pay the toll plus an administration fee. If you do not pay the toll notice, you get a reminder notice with extra administration fees or overdue fees. If you still do not pay, you get a final notice with overdue fees. If you do not pay this by the due date, you may have to go to court. See toll notices at roads-maritime.transport.nsw.gov.au